Hello. Hey, Meek. Hey, Dan. How's it going? I just just restarted uh, Flight Simulator because I realized I didn't have the uh, nameplates turned on. Uh, and I assume we're going to have a few people join to fly around the Pelican and multiplayer right now. So had to get that going with the little nameplate mod so they're not um, 
not huge and I can actually keep them turned on for the stream. There we go, nameplates on. And I guess this was just announced this morning that the Halo Pelican is now part of Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is crazy. There it is. So it's on Xbox and PC and it's free. So all you have to do is go to the marketplace and it should be right here in the highlights. So here it is, the D77 TC Pelican. Pretty crazy. So just go here and then right here will be a button that says download, get and download or something like that. Just click on that and then you'll have it available. And if you want to fly along with me, um, I'm on the US West server, West USA. So all I have to do is make sure that when you're here in the, in the main menu, go up, click on your little avatar in the top right, your name up here and change your server to West USA to make sure we're all on the same multiplayer server if you want to fly around. Oh, hey Miko, sorry. Your dog's name. That's a good name. It's easy to say. All right, sorry, Mik Miko, Miko. Uh, all right, so world's map. And then I actually don't know what section the Pelican's listed under. I went, oh, is it under jets? Oh, it is under jets. Okay, there we go. So you can filter for jets if you have a ton of aircraft, like probably a lot of us do nowadays. It's only growing. So go ahead to jets and then you can find the Pelican right here. And then what you can do is go to liveries and there's like there's like a dozen liveries for this thing. Oh, there's four, eight, 12, 13 liveries, which is awesome. <laughs> this is just, I was just catching up. I like uh, got a super late breakfast, was catching up on the chatter in discord and noticed you got, some of you guys were talking about uh, the Pelican being released. So I quickly installed it. I flew it around for like 15 minutes or so just now before I started the stream to figure out, uh, there is an autopilot. So of course I figured that out as soon as possible. <laughs> it's pretty basic though. It's got like a heading mode and a vertical speed mode. Um, and this thing flies like, it kind of flies like, oh, what's, what is it? The Optima? What's the, um, oh, sorry. More like the velocity. So it, it kind of flies like the vol, what do you say, vol volocopter. The Velocity Velocopter, Velocopter, vel Velocopter, whatever. It flies kind of like this when you're in manual mode. It just flies like a drone. So all you need is your stick moves you laterally. So forward, backwards, left, and right. And then you just use your rudders to rotate, to, to yaw left and right, like rotate in a flat spin. And then you use the throttle to go up and down. Um, so in its default hover mode, the Pelican works the same way. So it just works like a drone. But then there's a switch on it. You can switch into a cruise mode and then it flies like a normal plane does. So you know, all your thrust is you know pushing you forward and then you, you bank and pitch and yaw as usual uh, like you would flying a regular plane. So played around with it a little bit, it's pretty cool. And it goes really fast. So <laughs> I think it's, uh, it goes like 350 knots um, uh, indicated before it gives you like an overspeed warning. And then um, the vertical speed is pretty nuts. Uh, just in hover mode at full throttle, I got to like 10,000 feet in no time. Um, anyway, I'm gonna have a hard time picking which livery I wanna use. I was using this camo one before. I'm gonna use, I kinda wanna use the blue camo. It's pretty cool. This is probably gonna be, I feel like the blue camo is gonna be pretty popular. And I assume all these liveries are straight from the different Halo games. I think the last Halo game I played, I tried Halo Infinite when it came out earlier. I think it was earlier this year. It came out in beta. I played that a little bit, wasn't super into it, but I think, you know, like the single player Halo games, I think I played like Reach. It's probably the last one that was like years ago. Um, so I'm not as familiar with all the like dropship liveries, but I assume some of these are accurate from the games. I mean, the, obviously like the dark green ones, look these like the standard ones, but. 16 milliseconds. Yeah, it's I'm not sure where the server is exactly. It must be really close to me in the Los Angeles area. And we have we have fiber pretty commonly around here, so I get pretty lucky with some of my some of my pings. Alright, so I'm just gonna play with the blue one for now. And I don't have a plan as far as where to go. I think we should check out do a couple um 
like city areas. Like we should, we could do like I'm trying to think, I don't want to do like Chicago. It might be a little too much, but we could do like BC or do Montreal or something like that. I think some usually Chicago and like New York are frame killers. Maybe stay away from there, but I'm going to start in the LA area just to get off the ground and fly around a little bit. Let's go to, should we go to a military base to start and then fly to the coast? I think that would be good. Let's go near San Diego. Let's go to Miramar and fly around San Diego. So here's Miramar Air Force Base in the San Diego area. So it's Kilo, November, Kilo X-Ray, K-N-K-X. K-N-K-X. I'll type that in the chat. So let's just start here at parking if you guys want to fly along and we'll get this thing off the ground. And I'm going to choose a parking spot so we can use the assisted checklist and get it all started up and hover around a bit before we fly off somewhere. We'll just fly. Maybe we'll fly around San Diego, like downtown San Diego. And then uh, pick an airport over here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and load in at parking. I'm at 31. And make sure if you're doing multiplayer, go up here to flight conditions as well. So first, under your name, set to West USA. And then down here under flight conditions, make sure you have it set to all players. I have live traffic on as well. And I'm just using live weather and time. So um, in this case, yeah. I usually keep it on all players to see everyone regardless of their weather and time settings and all that. All right, and we'll load it in. How do you land? Oh, it's so easy to land. All you do is make sure it's in hover mode, make sure the gear is down, and you just lower the throttle slowly until it just, you'll be hovering the whole time so you don't have to touch the stick or anything. Um, and yeah, you just lower the throttle while you're in hover mode until you just land vertically. So land it like you would a drone, not like you would a plane. And the, you can see the landing gear too. Like it's just like two sticks on the bottom, basically that holds you up. So yeah, like if you look, if you look at the gear on this thing, you know, it's set. Well, I haven't, I haven't actually tried. Are there wheels on the bottom of this? Oh yeah, there are. So I've only landed vertically. I'm not sh Oh man, I guess you could land it normally, huh? I have not tried to land this uh, normally, like land it like in plane or cruise mode. I've only tried to land it vertically which is by far the easier way to do it i'll we'll have to give it i'll have to give it a try we're th a throttle glitch above 80 percent i had that happen when the engine wasn't on watch if i hit the throttle right now watch what happens i'm throttling up wait nothing is happening wait it's not happening <laughs> hey thorn how's it going <laughs> do it yeah i mean we'll have to give it a try probably be really hard 20 miles from microsoft headquarters that you have fiber you should have good internet nice uh, yeah, Omar, I'm on PC, but the Pelican is on PC and Xbox. So all you have to do is go to the marketplace and download it. And it's free. They just released it this morning, I guess. All right, I'm going to turn the music off for now. I see Lefty right there just took off. <laughs> Dude, the sounds this thing, the, the sounds that it makes are amazing too. Um, when you're in hover mode and you're just moving forward and backwards and stuff and you're uh, using it like drone mode, the sounds it makes are really cool. Um, let me jump back in. If I hit the throttle, yeah, yeah, there we go. Look, it like bounces up in the air. I don't know if this you were talking about, but if you throttle up while you're on the ground with the engines off, this is what it does. <laughs> you got like hydraulics going or something. <laughs> yeah, Omar. Yeah, please do. Yeah, I'm on the USA West server, so make sure you join USA West and in, in multiplayer, like flight conditions options. Turn um turn it to all players just to make sure you can see everyone. Just in case they have different time of day settings. Alright, so um the checklists do exist for this, which is awesome. So if you want to learn to manually start it, you can do that. Um because I rely on so many of the automated things, my obsession with the autopilot systems in general, I use the automated checklist a lot. But if you open the checklist up here at the top menu, when you start at parking, you can manually start it. I'm going to do that real quick. And then if you want to start on a runway, then it'll be started for you automatically. So all you have to do if you start on the runway is just give it throttle and it'll just start hovering. And we'll look at that in just a second. 
So I have these autocomplete page buttons on mine. If you want those, then you just need to go into your settings under assistance options here. Sorry, I go over this every time, but I want to make sure people know. And then under here, go to piloting and turn on assisted checklist. So this is just a really, I use this all the time, especially when I'm off stream and I'm uh, working on videos, not, not really working on many this year, I guess, but um, I will be today and tomorrow working on one. Um, assisted checklist, just turn this on and, and then go back in and you'll get this autocomplete page button. You may have to close and reopen the checklist to get it to show up again. So now I can just use autocomplete page. And what it also gives you is this evaluation button. So this is a really easy way to learn all the steps. It'll move the camera for you, show you where all the controls are. So I'll just hit evaluation. Flight controls. And as it reads, this off, reads it off, you need to do something. So it says testing flight controls. So in this case, you just need to move the stick and your rudder pedals to their extremes. And I'm moving my rudders right now. So now it'll automatically check it off and move it to the next spot. Now it says check the power lever. lever. So I'll check, check the throttle, move it. it. It just jumped a little bit. And then, it, you know, it'll go through this and point through On. each section, show you where the buttons Avionics, are. So you can just switch. get this guided tour into how to start how to start each plane that has these kind of thorough checklists. On. All right, so we got the battery and avionics on. And I'm gonna close this for now. So what we have here is right in front of us, I guess the primary seat is the right seat. So we're just in the right seat by default. And we have our main display here. I'll just call it a PFD. And it's in synthetic vision mode by default. So this looks kind of similar to like a HUD and a jet or like a fighter jet or something. In the, on the left side, we have all of our speed information. On the right side, we have our altitude information. And then in the bottom right, we have a, this is like a thrust lever, um, uh, a thrust meter from zero to 100%. And this little section here in the middle is neutral. So this is where we're required to bring our thrust up until we can actually hover and take off. So as I move the thrust lever, you'll, you'll see it move up. We don't have the engines on yet. But once I get into this area, then we'll start being able to... Wait, what? I don't have the engine started. Okay, yeah, it's just doing the weird jump thing that it does. Okay, so yeah, once you get past this zone, you can see that's where it'll start climbing. So this is kind of our little neutral area. If we wanted to just hover, we would move our thrust into this little green zone here. And in that ballpark is where we'll be hovering at any, you know, any time we're in uh, the hover mode. And speaking of hover mode, this switch right up here with the big yellow stripes behind it, this is our switch to go from hovering mode to cruise mode. So basically drone mode to cruise, cruise mode, and it's in drone by default. So down is drone, up is cruise. And then this is our landing gear right here. And we're at Miramar, so K-N-K-X, I'll type it in the chat again. USA West, K-N-K-X and USA West. I'm just starting here and we can uh, fly around San Diego for a bit too. Get our group of uh, Halo dropships going. Could be kind of fun. And if you're just joining, this is on Xbox and PC. So just go to the marketplace and download it. And pick a cool livery. There's like 13 liveries you can pick from. This thing is giant. I love how it just dwarfs the uh, the like super hornets that are here on the ground. <laughs> it's just awesome. All right, let me keep going through the checklist here. Oh, the mountain is here. Wait, is that my dog? Let me open this photo really quickly. <laughs> yeah. So the mountain is in the chat. That's uh, that's my dog named the mountain. Somebody is controlling his account in the other room, giggling, I'm sure. Okay, so the checklist, let's go to starting engine. And then I'm just going to use auto complete page for these. So you can use evaluation mode if you want to go through and learn where all the actual buttons are. But I'm just going to hit auto complete. And it'll roll through and autocomplete each of the checklists. Generators and alternators. I did that too quickly because the engines are still spooling up. Before taxi, navigation lights, all that. Parking brake released. And then takeoff. I'm just going to do some of these individually. So beacon on. The rest of these are on already. Taxi can come off when we're taking off. Or once we take off. But I'm just going to turn it off now. Flight mode hover, so that's, again, this switch right here. Down is hover mode or drone mode. Up is the um, is the cruise mode. 
So turn it up if you want to act like a plane, down if you want to act like a drone. Down for drone. And then here to take off, power lever above 55%. So that's what we saw over here. This thrust meter right down here. Once this gets over 55%, we'll start going up. You're using the hover rudders in hover mode and it won't turn. You could try resetting to the default profile in your controls. Something, uh, something that happens pretty often when they do world updates and sim updates, especially sim updates, is that a lot of the controls will have new, like, possible shortcuts added to them. And so I regularly need to go in and just reset things to the default to get them working again. Um, I happen to have the crosswinds, and I had I had reset them too. But yeah, I would just double check that um, and you could go in here and expand and make sure that your axis is on there um, this is the one I didn't have set was nose wheel steering axis which is a new default and it's the same axis that I use for the actual rudder axis I don't know if it's using one or the other um, for this specific plane maybe, I don't know maybe there's a bug where you have to be using the nose wheel steering axis but anyway, I would, in general, set things back to defaults on your controllers, on your peripherals, if you're having problems where things aren't working, and then re-customize it from there. It's usually a good thing way to just reset it. Uh, are the labels for the aircraft around specific to the Pelican? Uh, no, these are a mod I just downloaded. Let me link you, link you guys. Link to this mod. It's What is it? Um, just downloaded it um it is the cppr it's the clompsy nameplates um i'll put that in the description too here are the nameplates i'm using so there's a diff a few different versions you can download and it replaces the defaults so yeah these are the green v2 ones from that from that page i just linked and you can just find you download it and then choose one of the folders so it has like 10 folders for different colors, like orange and green and original red, blah, blah, blah. This is the green V2 version. So it looks good in day and night. It like puts this black uh, little pill shape thing behind the name during the day, which is cool. Um, yeah, you just drag one of those folders into your community folder and that will uh, give you the new name plates when you turn them on. Make sure you restart the sim after you do it. Uh, let me put that in the, um, I'm gonna put that in the, video description all right just updated that so if you guys uh want you can find that inside the video description too all right so we already have the we already have this started up uh some other things so i'm on pc so i use the instrument presets a lot control one through nine so this is the default view um, my hat on my joystick, or if you're on Xbox, I think you hold like left or right bumper and then use the D-pad to cycle through the, the instrument presets. This is if I hit up, um, so you get a better ground view. So this is good if you, when you're coming into land. And if I hit down twice, it'll get down to the instrument views. Or this is the same as hitting control one to get to the first instrument view. Um, I'm going to set my altimeter. You can see it's at standard right now. You can hit B on your keyboard as a shortcut to set it. Or if you look it up through ATIS, you know it manually. It's this little knob right here in the bottom left controls the your barometric pressure. So it looks like it's 2988 right now at Miramar. And then if I hit Control 2, it comes to the center area. So these are our two COM radios, COM 1 and COM 2. Underneath this panel, uh, we have a few buttons. So we can go to engine information. So this is during startup. It looks like it idles at 20% on the engines. And then there's also little arrows here. So down shows that we're in hover mode. If we switch this, these will be pointing to the left instead to show that we're in cruise mode. I uh, might not do it until we take off actually. All right, I'll show that again when we take off. I guess it doesn't change until we take off. And I also have the parking brake on still, so that could be messing with it. And then there's also a fuel, uh, so you can check your fuel. Looks like there's just a front and a back tank, and the front is filled by default. So I can fill the back main tank as well right here. You can see it go up to 100%. And then electrical is not operational. For the radio, if you want to manually change these, so you can see they're either um, on or off, and then you have the active and the standby and a swap button. 
So if you want to put in a different frequency, there's a little numeric keypad right down here. This is where you can enter the frequency. So you just click the one you want to edit and then type in the new frequency. I'll just type in 111. Let's do 11. One. Wait, why is that not typing in? 116. 119, because it's not valid, that's why. 1196. There we go. 666. Just a random number. So now that becomes the active one. And then if you hit swap, that'll change it to standby. It might actually. I have to test it. This, this may be active. This could be standby, and orange may be active. Let's test that real quick. So if I tune ground, or let's tune ATIS, 133475. Okay, the green green one is active, okay. But it looks like, okay, you can change the active or the standby frequency directly. So unlike on, say, a Garmin, like a G1000 or something, or any other radio really besides this, you normally have to put it in the standby and then hit swap to make it active. But it looks like in the Pelican, you can just hit the frequency and then I type it in so I can just uh, I can just automatically change the active frequency without having you stand by first. So anyway, the green one is active. All right. And then that's our comms. And then there's also, I haven't even played with the nav radio. I don't know how they show up. So if we have enough time, I'll take a look at that in a bit. Underneath this um, kind of like system information panel here, we have the autopilot controls. This is only usable in cruise mode. So when you're in hover mode, or if you're in cruise with autopilot on and switch to hover mode, it'll turn the autopilot off completely. But you have the engage button here. We have an altitude hold. We have a heading mode. There is no nav mode that I can tell. Uh, and flight level change mode is not active. And then there's vertical speed mode. And all you can do with vertical speed is tell it go up or go down. So it'll just automatically uh, climb or descend to your target altitude. And you can set an altitude to hold at. And then there's also auto throttle mode, so we can uh, set our target airspeed automatically, not have to manage the throttles ourselves, like you would do in your airliners. Auto bank, I haven't played with, so I don't really know what that does. All right, and down here, yeah, these are engine controls, engine and generators and all that that got used during the startup procedure. And that's about it. So the left side and the right side displays here are, oh, connection lost, oh no. We broke the servers. The left side and the right side displays, or like if you want to call them a PFD, they're independent. So you could switch one to the camera mode. Oh, I guess that'll be available once we take off. It does work. Uh, synthetic vision, which is pretty much our heads up display. And then uh, our map. So the map has a heading bug we can change. And it also has uh, a range we can change. These two knobs here, one of them is for the range. So you can zoom in and out. It's got like this, you know, topographical kind of map. And I don't think it shows any kind of waypoints or anything on this. Um, all of these waypoint buttons in here don't seem to do anything. Oh, whoa, wait, it's working. Dude, I just tried this right before I started the stream and none of these were doing anything. Okay, looks like you have terrain mode, weather. Do we see any waypoints? Oh, we do see waypoints, whoa. All right, I am totally wrong. They do work, cool. Um, these weren't... Let me try it over on the other display. I swear they weren't working when I tried it earlier. All right, it's working. Awesome, so it looks like we have, I, I'm guessing this is a relative terrain mode like we'd have on the NXI where it shows um, how far you are vertically to the terrain, what your altitude is relative to the terrain altitude around you. So once we get higher, this will turn from red to yellow, then to green to show us that we're at a safe altitude and not gonna run into any terrain. Yeah, okay, and then I guess waypoints do work. Maybe I was just zoomed out too far before. Yeah, I was probably just zoomed out too far when I tried waypoints. So this knob here on the right changes your zoom level. And we can see all of our RNAV waypoints or GPS waypoints. Let's see, nav aids gives us our VORs. So there we have a VOR and airport. Presumably, yep, we get the airports. Okay, so this is kind of like you'd see also in an airliner where you have different options for turning on different types of waypoints. Um, so I'm going to leave, let's leave terrain on, and I don't have any waypoints loaded, though it will load in waypoints from the world map. So if you choose um, a series of waypoints, a departure and arrival, you choose an IFR plan or 
uh, customly enter your waypoints, it will transfer them in here and it will draw a route um, on the display here for it on the map. But uh, there's no way to actually program the waypoint, so not surprisingly, there's no way to program it in here. All right, so I'm gonna leave that on and go back to synthetic vision. So I'm just gonna turn the map on over here in terrain mode, there we go. All right, sweet, let's actually take off now. <laughs> I've been doing this the whole time. Parking brake button is right here. Uh, I have a shortcut for that, so this is parking brake on when it's up and off when it's down. And then all you have to do to take off, it's in default uh, hover mode by default. So all you have to do is get the throttle above this 55 threshold and it'll start taking off. So as I start increasing my throttle and I'm not, you don't have to touch the stick or anything. It works just like a drone does, like the velocity drone if you've flown that. So once I get around 55, you can see it's getting ready to get up. And then we're up. All right, so once you're up, the landing gear, when you put the landing gear up, it's these two giant legs on the back and the little nose wheel will retract. So if you want to do that manually, it's just this little landing button right here, LDG landing gear. You can click on that or you can use any shortcut you have. So I'm using my Bravo throttle quadrant, just pulling the gear up. And we're just hovering. So if you've never flown the Velocity, um, you know, something I noticed about this is I expect these, the thrusters, all four of them, looks like there's four engines. There's like two here on the wing, one on each wing and, and one on the back. One on each side and the back, so four total. They, I don't know if it's a bug, but I would expect them to be pointing down right now. You know, maybe it's just a, a limitation right now, but anyway, that's what we're doing. Hey, Straw. Uh, you're going to be coming into Miramar five minutes if you want to watch me try to butter it down. Oh, you're going to try to land it normally? Yeah, I haven't. I, I've only landed it with, um, let me watch my altitude here. Just pull the throttle down a little bit. I haven't tried to land it normally yet. Just in, I've landed it with hover mode just once right before I started the stream. So it's definitely the easy way to do it. So have you never flown the drone before? Oh, the thrusters are, are on the bottom of the engines. Oh, okay. Oh, right here. I get it. So here's one, two. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't actually do that. Here's three and four. So I assume these, these four oval, uh, or pill shaped things are the hover engines. Got it. So these are just stabilizing it. That's really cool. Okay. How dare I question Microsoft, uh, the Halo team and Microsoft collaborating. <laughs> All right. That's really cool. And then I did notice um, what you can do is if you look at the bottom, like where the cockpit is or the flight deck is right in here and you can actually walk back into here. So if you have your um, your camera controls, uh, you have to you have to always like walk sideways to move the camera back, but you can move to the back part of the flight deck here. And there's just some like cool details here, like some extra computers that aren't functional, but I don't know if there's any Easter eggs in here for like uh, big Halo fans. I think, are there normally weapons mounted in here? This looks like a spot for like uh, Halo guns. And then you can actually go through the door here if you just slide through it. And there's this whole back area or this middle area kind of with more computers. Oh, wait, what? Whoa, what? Okay, I guess you could do that. Oh, is there, is there one? That's so cool. I didn't, I didn't discover that in the 15 minutes I was playing with it before. So you can just use this to open and close the door. Oh, that's so cool. All right, let's shuffle our way to the back here. And then you can get back to like the, um, the troop loading area too. It's like 10 seats here. I actually didn't realize the door is open until just now. Oh, you can open the cargo door. What? I hope my altitude is fine right now. All right, cargo door. I assume the control for this is up front, right? Has this only been out a couple hours? Was this really just released this morning or am I late to the party? 
Oh, it's in the cockpit, yeah. Okay, cool. Let's find that. Oh, let's check my altitude real quick. All right, we're getting kind of high. Oh, we're not too bad. Um, here on the, like, PFD, I'll just call it, you have your vertical speed, so... Right there in VS, I can just see my vertical speed. So I'm just going to pull that down a bit. Um, I wish autopilot... I mean, it's kind of silly to have autopilot uh, capability in the in the hover mode, but it would be cool if I could set vertical speed down and then set the autopilot target altitude so it would stop, you know, while I'm messing around with this. Bottom right... Uh, the bottom rightmost button above the pilot display. Okay, this guy. All right, let's try it. Whoa, dude, that's so cool. This is totally safe. <laughs> All the doors open leading straight up. Whoa, you can hear the wind. That is so cool. I, I wonder if the wind sound changes if you close the inner door. Man, this is so detailed. All right, let's try this. Oh, it does. <laughs> that's crazy. I don't know why I did... I don't know why I don't expect this level of detail, especially for something they just like... Like, I didn't know this... I didn't know the Pelican was coming, and all of a sudden we have the Pelican, and... I mean, the level of detail is... I just assumed that this kind of stuff wouldn't be in, but like... It actually has a breeze play if you open all the doors. You know, if anybody uh, made like, cool cinematic Halo videos, it seems like maybe Microsoft Flight Sim is something for them right now. <laughs> Dude, this is really cool. Yeah, this is <laughs> this is insane. And they just gave this away for free, which is also amazing. And I read through a bit of the announcement of the 40th anniversary edition, so that's coming out in November, I guess, this year. And there's a good like what is it? Eight new planes. There's like two gliders, four classic planes including like the Wright Brothers plane. Um, there are two helicopters and all of that stuff's going to be free as well. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty insane how much stuff Microsoft gives away in this game. I mean, this is like a, a great example. <laughs> uh, you can play the Halo. You can also play the Halo theme song in the plane. No way. Is it one of these switches as well? I should look at what these do before I hit them, but whatever. Uh, let me go ahead and turn the tooltips on really quickly. Um, let's see. Uh, it's under it's under accessibility. I haven't turned them on for a while. Instrument name, tooltips, menu. Uh, yeah, these. Let's see what this is. Oh, anti ice. Awesome. I didn't uh, realize I had an anti ice system, but that's great. Okay, pedo heat, of course, and windshield de-ice. Okay, so these three are the anti-ice controls. Anti-ice, pedo, and windshield. And then, okay, yeah, there's cargo door. Camera angle. I did use this before, so if you switch to cam vision here, you get the camera, and you can change the tilt of it using this. So if you want to look straight down, or you want to make it more like a... kind of, kind of a glass cockpit-ish by showing what you can't see through the through the controls here. Um, it's a thing on the left side. All right, there's a way to play Halo music. It's to the left on a CD button. It's a play button. To the left. Oh, oh, the CD player right here. Oh my god, dude. Oh, I have music turned off in the options. Let me turn the music back on. That's why I don't hear it, I guess. Music's at zero. All right. Let's close the uh, cargo pot, cargo door. Yes. <laughs> Uh, 
That's so cool. This is crazy. Thanks for showing me that, guys. I, did, I had no idea you could do that. Alright, let's close this all back up. You can actually slide through the door without opening it. It's, it's convenient. That is so cool. Alright, let's turn that off before I get copyright claimed. <laughs> Maybe if that if that's even a thing. I don't think I've played any copyrighted music, so we'll see if we'll see if this is the first video that gets it. Alright, so alright, we know all that now. And yeah, camera tilt. Alright, I'm gonna turn the tool tips back off and uh I think we should fly around San Diego. How fast and high will it go? We'll we'll test that out. I think the the overspeed warning I got earlier was at about uh, 360 knots indicated. So we'll test that out. I don't know. Um, um, once you get higher and higher, what the what true airspeed will be, but we'll check that out. All right. Uh, let's see. Miscellaneous or accessibility. I'll turn the tooltips back off. All right, so we're still just hovering here. Let me reset my camera angles and stuff. And we definitely have some clouds. All right, let's let's uh, let's just take it higher. I'm just going to give it some thrust here. We're going to go... Just going to gain some altitude. Neil says he got it to Mach 1.24. Fo uh, Why can't I say 4? 1.24. All right, so I'm just giving it some throttle. This thing climbs like crazy too. I'm at like, I'm at like 80% right now. We're going 5,000 feet per second, or 5,000 feet a minute uh, up right now. 5,000 feet per minute, 6,000. We'll give it max throttle. Okay, we're going 10,000 feet per minute and climbing. <laughs> 12,450 feet per minute is the climb on your max throttle. Whoa, some of these camera, some of the camera presets are freaking out right now. Not sure why it's holding my camera. All right. Oh, you can actually see the, you can like see the flame coming out of the uh, vertical uh, thrusters. Uh, can you see if you're putting 117 in the keypad does anything as a, for the comm frequency? All right, we're at 16,000 so far. So if we wanna, um, if we wanna, if you guys haven't flown the drones before, uh, when you're in hover mode like this, all you need to do is use the rudders to rotate. So this is left and right rudder. We'll just rotate you like this. And then to move to move through space, to move laterally, you just use the stick. So if you push forward on the stick, then it's going to move the plane forward. So you can see the back thrusters on now as I push forward on the stick. So it works just like the Velocity um, drone if you've flown that in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And then same laterally if you want to move left and right. Dude, the sound effects are just awesome. I'm actually, I'm not sure what it's doing with the camera. It's kind of like automatically moving it for me for some reason. Which... I don't want it to do. Okay, maybe it's because of that. There we go. Reset. It hurts your realistic simulator heart. I know. I know it's kind of weird to see a video game dropship, a Halo dropship in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But man, it's so cool though. <laughs> I guess, it would, yeah, you know, I think it's one of those things where like, it's gonna be cool for a bit. People will fly it around for a week or two, or even an hour or two, and maybe be done with it. All right, let's check our altitude now. I don't know, it's cool. It, it makes sense, and people that are fans of the game, you know, fans of Halo, I'm sure think it think it's amazing. All right, so we're at 28,800 feet, and our vertical speed mode has stopped. So either we can't hover any higher, or we can't go any higher. I'm guessing it's the former. So we're gonna switch into cruise mode. So this will be just like, you know, 
it'll fly more like a, just a, reg a traditional plane as opposed to a drone. So what I have to do is switch this. And now all the thrust just gets transferred. Normally it's just coming from the back instead. So our throttle controls our forward thrust just like in a plane. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it more thrust. So we're already starting to fall. All right, so let's pitch it up and see how high we can get. So it looks like we got to 28,000 in hover mode. Just gonna give it max thrust. So our indicated airspeed, 180 right now. True airspeed, just passing 300 knots. Ground speed, 300. Mach 0.5. Just gonna pull the nose down a bit. Just making sure everything is right, parking brake is off, landing gear is up, all that. Alright, so we're at 29 now. So it looks like when you're in hover mode, so you can't hover higher than 28,000 feet. But we're, we're passing 30k now. This is just awesome. I know uh, a lot of us uh, like to fly with career mods, like uh, career mode apps, like NeoFly and stuff like that. If they add this to those, I mean, it would be like cheat mode. It's like, you know, a helicopter plus a plane in one. Because um, so many of those missions, like especially if you do NeoFly, so many of them are really fun. Um, when you do the rescue missions, you have to be really accurate when you land. Uh, you know, you're landing on hot spots. Oh man, there goes somebody at 70,000 feet. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, the realistic simulator thing, it might be a little bit weird if, uh, if you have something like this and you're just crushing all those missions. But I don't know, it'd be really fun. Like you do the uh, helicopter landing style, the helicopter style missions, like the VIP um, escorts and things like that in NeoFly. All right, we're starting to, let's see. I oh, know we're still good. All right, let me turn on the autopilot. So when you're in cruise mode, so that's when this switch right here is in the up position, then you can enable autopilot. So you can just hit AP engage right down here or use a shortcut. And then what you have is just heading mode and you have like vertical speed up and down mode and an auto thrust. So I'm leaving auto thrust off for now just cause we're gonna see how high we can climb. I'll just keep leaving it maxed out. Um, if you want to change the heading, you can either do it on the left or the right side. And there's a heading knob, so this one right here is the heading. Oh, uh, actually, sorry, the heading change knob is here in the middle on the autopilot controls. So if I switch to the radar map, there's no numerical value for the heading that you have set. It's just got the bug here. You can see this little rectangle here on north. So if I use this top left knob over here on the autopilot unit, that'll move that little bug. So I'm just gonna move it straight ahead to keep us going on the same heading we're on and then just hit heading. And so now it's just gonna hold our heading. And then I'll switch back to synthetic vision. So this will give us these, got it over 40K, nice. Okay, we're at 45 so far, but yeah, our indicated airspeed is dropping pretty dramatically. So we're at 130 knots now. I think towards the ground that was, I think I've seen this, at 370 or so at a lower altitude. True airspeed's 290 and our ground speed's 306, so we might be nearing the limit. Um, also with the autopilot, you can set a target or selected altitude. That's this little magenta number right here. You can set that using the bottom left knob, I believe. Yeah, right here. So this top left one over here on the autopilot is the heading. The one on the bottom left is your selected altitude. What's nice is if you click and drag it, if you're on PC, it goes up pretty rapidly. So I can just set that all the way up. Okay, looks like to 80,000. And our vertical speed yeah, is, is not great right now, 160. But once you set that, you can then enable vertical speed mode. Generally, you wanna set your selected altitude first so you know where it's gonna level off, what altitude you're gonna stop at before you tell it to go up or down to that altitude. So now I can just hit vertical speed mode here and you can see it's set to up by default, probably just based on us having a positive vertical speed already. 
So it just has vertical speed mode up and down. You don't tell it how quickly to climb or descend. You just say, uh, go up or go down in altitude. And it'll climb or descend automatically, and then it'll stop and level off at whatever pre-selected altitude you put in here on this magenta number. So if you've ever used an autopilot uh, before, you know, this is familiar. So this is how you use those. And then, oh, afterburner. Flight mode without needing to fiddle on screen with a mouse. Actually, I don't, let me, am I using the afterburner? I just have it max out on my regular throttle. I don't, I need to rebind afterburner then. Maybe that's why our speed is lacking. Let me rebind that really quickly. Thanks, Cami. I'll, I'll check that out right now. Let's uh, go to controls. And I'm gonna do it on my Bravo. So I'm just, there's a little thumb button I have on my throttle. Uh, is it freeware? It is. Uh, the, the Pelican's in the marketplace for free. Just go to the marketplace and download it right now. All right, so let's look for um, Afterburner. Toggle Afterburner, and I'm just gonna set it to a little thumb button I have on my throttle. It was my go around button. Yeah, I'm curious. I, I didn't even check the, uh, the... Oh, it looks like uh, I had it on already, I think. So it might be automatic when you go to 100. Actually, let me unbind the go around just in case that's doing something with our throttle. Make sure there's no conflict here. All right, unbind this one, clear, apply. So toggle afterburner. So I'm at 100% throttle. And I hit afterburner and we lose everything. And I just hit afterburner again. Okay, yeah, it looks like, oh, the overspeed's over 400 knots, okay. Yeah, I ran into that a little bit earlier before I started the stream. All right, so yeah, it looks like the afterburner might be automatically engaged. Maybe it's just on by default because when I hit the button, it uh, it tr turns it off. All right, let's try vertical speed up again. Heading mode is back on, so just let this let the autopilot keep taking us up. Once we're done with this, I'll fly back down towards the ground. We'll fly around San Diego a bit in drone mode. And then maybe we'll pick another uh, couple of cities. I think I want to do one with a world map. We'll do like one flight using the world map because the waypoints do show up here. Uh, but to fly the legs, you'll just need to manually do it using heading mode or just, you know, actually manually flying the plane. Where is the manual? I have, I have no idea if there even is one. <laughs> Quality as we know it. I mean, I, I mean, I'm impressed. I didn't. I didn't expect, I mean, I don't know if anybody expected them to release this. <laughs> I know that it's a little weird for people that just sim and don't play Halo or anything, but I mean, this is really cool. It's cool that we can fly fictional aircraft too, you know? It's kind of rad. Yeah, I do want to see how high we can get this. Was That was in the trailer, right, that they released that it showed it in space, is that right? I mean, a lot of the time, you know, for flight sim, your your manuals are real world manuals. If they did their job, then, you know, the real world manuals you find will translate pretty well. All right, so we're still. Let's see, we're climbing at sixteen hundred feet per minute, so that's good. I think before I was using before I was using the autopilot, we were at hundred feet per minute or something. So it's pitched us up quite a bit more. Our indicated airspeed's dropping a bit, so we'll see when we stall here. Oh, it doesn't have an afterburner. Oh, that's flight mode and hover mode. Oh, oh, let me, let me see. Oh, you're right, you're right. Yep. Nice. Thanks, car care. Yep. So it looks like if you toggle the afterburner, it does, it does shortcut to this switch right here. Nice, good eye. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. That's a really, that's really convenient though. I mean, that switch is pretty easy to find, but yeah, that's great. I'm going to turn us around just so we get headed back towards where we started. Uh, so I'm just going to use the heading bug and flip us around 
or east, so I'm just gonna go west. Let's flip this all the way around. All right, you can see in heading mode, you know, just like you'd expect with it. Any other autopilot is gonna automatically turn us to our selected heading. In the lore, it can go Mach 4. It, I'm east of Miramar, but um, I'm gonna turn back and head that way. I just wanted to test the altitude first, and then uh, I'm gonna fly around downtown San Diego. So if you guys wanna meet at Miramar, once I get back, I don't know how long it'll take to figure out how high we can fly though. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're just directly, we're pretty much directly east of Miramar. Miramar's right over here, KNKX. Just fly back towards all the other humans. All right, what are we at now? Uh, 41,000, so it's still climbing. I lost a few thousand feet when I switched to hover mode. Oh, what's cool is it looks like, oh, oops, my altimeter's wrong. There we go. Set it back to standard. Um, what's cool is you can hover to 28,000 feet, which is kind of nuts. All right, so we're at 43. The selected altitude limitation is 80,000. I don't think that's gonna it's probably not going to indicate how high we can actually go, but we'll find out, I guess. Miko, I'm on USA West. Eric, what's up? You can be my pilot. Hey, buddy. <laughs> uh, what happens if we open the cargo door at 44,000 feet? Probably nothing good. You got it to 50,000? Maybe that's, oh, it's pitching down right now, actually, yeah. We're at almost 100 knots indicated, and our vertical speed just dropped quite a bit. Yep, we're at 44,000, and at least the autopilot does not want us to go any higher than this. What What did they show in the, yeah, our angle of attack is really high, too. What is, uh, what did it show in the trailer? It show, I thought it showed this in space, didn't it? I have to recheck the trailer, but uh, yeah. I know one of you just asked, how do you get it into space? <laughs> it would be really cool if you could uh, fly, like, I don't know, like a SpaceX shuttle or something. <laughs> it's just, this game just turns into like, uh, you know, flight simulator meets, uh, what, No Man's Sky meets uh, Kerbal Space Program or something like that. Oh, slew mode. Yeah, that's probably true. I don't know. I'm not sure, Paul. Just flying it for the first time. So, I mean, right now we're at 100 indicated and our vertical speed is dropping. So, and yeah, maybe we should just see what happens if we just pitch it up. <laughs> Turn the auto autopilot off and just keep the nose up and see what happens. I mean, we would do that at a lower altitude, I guess, but... Let's see what we get. Let's see what we stall at. I mean, we're super high. We're at 43,000 feet. And my pitch trim wheel works on this. I don't know where the actual pitch trim controls are in, in the cockpit, but I might have to hunt around for those a bit. All right, here's our stall, it looks like, at 70. Yeah, it looks like it stalls about 70 indicated. And we just get the, kind of the standard Microsoft Flight Simulator nose down, roll left that happens when you stall. I actually don't, uh, I haven't really like, thoroughly tested the stall in um, how each plane might stall differently from each other, but uh, I feel like it's pretty common where it just does the same kind of stall recipe each time. Rolls left, nose goes down. 
maybe that's just how all planes stall. I've never actually stalled a plane myself in real life, so to go ask my partner in the other room what happens. All right, I'm gonna make my way back to Miramar. And we're gonna get an overspeed warning. Yep, there it is. So overspeed happened at, I think it was around 360 indicated. We're already down to 26,000 feet. And I guess at uh, 28,000 feet, we can just, we could turn it back on a hover mode if we want and descend. You can descend in hover mode at, and, and climb at like 10,000 feet per minute. All right, let me, we're almost at the, there we go, 360. Yeah, it looks like 360 indicated is when the overspeed warning comes on. Set it the same at a lower altitude. I believe it's on Xbox, Jay, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it's on Xbox and PC. You guys will have to let me know though. I've been saying that it's on Xbox. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought I read in the in the article they released that it's on both. It must feel good as a. It just must feel good to re like post an article about something that's coming in November. You know, the 40th anniversary edition, and then in it put, hey, by the way, here's the Halo Pelican dropship today, and just be able to write, right now you can get it. It's pretty cool. Oh, update, you have to update the software first. That makes sense. Yeah, update the game, reload it, go to the marketplace and find it. Uh, it's, it was just listed in the main screen in the highlight section for me. I mean, this is what's really cool about this kind of plane. I know like some people will be like um, kind of annoyed that there's like a video game, like a fictional plane in a flight simulator. But um, at the same time, like what's really cool about this, especially if you play, I think, on Xbox or something and you're just using a Xbox controller and you want to sightsee like this is amazing for sightseeing this kind of thing. They, they released the velocity like drone last year. And it's just really, really slow. So this is basically like, you know, we get our Halo version of the beefed up drone. We can fly it like a drone or a plane. Um, I don't know, I think that's pretty awesome for, for sightseeing around the whole world. It's just really cool. It's just really easy to fly when it's in hover mode. It does not go into space. We just tried it. We got up to, we got up to 45,000 feet and then uh, are, we weren't able to climb anymore. Someone else in chat said they got it to about 50. Guess if you get enough uh, vertical speed going, just shoot really <laughs> up as fast as you can. Yeah, we got about uh, we got to about 45 using the autopilot. It's cool how many liveries they did too. There's like, whoa, what? <laughs> that looks like that looks like a little single engine. It's just dusting us. I wonder what it... I don't have the type of plane actually on there, so it's, I probably don't have a uh, jet or something that person's flying. All right, let's go. We're going back to Miramar now. So if you guys want to hop in, I was just going to take like a hover tour in this from Miramar down to downtown San Diego. Um, so I'm just going to go hover next to Miramar first. And I'm just using the VFR map to do this, but you can pull up those waypoints here on the radar map. So here's Miramar right here. And you can just switch into hover mode whenever. Uh, as long as you're, it looks like as long as you're below 28,000 feet, it'll work. Um, what's weird is I feel like weird just switching instantly into hover mode, but I think it's gonna be, it'll be okay. And we could try to land it normally, I don't know. Probably gonna crash and burn if I landed normally. But I mean, you can just, what's so easy about it is yeah, you can just get into a position like this. All right, we're close enough. I'm just gonna level off and just switch into hover mode. All right, and now we're in hover mode. 
And I'll go back to synthetic vision. And so again, on the thrust indicator here, if this little, if your thrust is in this green area here, you'll be pretty much zero on your vertical speed. You can see the vertical speed right here. So you see we're at negative 20, negative 15. So we're pretty much just completely hovering. And then, yeah, any more and you'll climb, any less and you'll drop, you'll descend. So we just, I'm just gonna pull all the throttle out. Descend at a very unsafe speed for a moment. And then use the rudders to rotate. Is the Pelican designed for horizontal landing? I'm not sure. I mean, based on the landing gear, like it looks like it's made just for vertical landing. I'd have to review my uh, my Halo like cinematic videos or cinematic cutscenes and stuff with the dropships and see. But I think it's yeah, I think it's just primarily for vertical landing. But I know some people are trying horizontal. So it's, yeah, why this is so cool for Flight Simulator, especially if you play this like casually on an Xbox, like on your couch and go sightseeing a lot. I feel like this is like the thing to fly now, especially because it's free. Everybody can just download it. Cause all you have to do is push forward on the stick and you move forward. You know, it just like flies like a drone. Use your rudders. So on Xbox, you use your triggers to turn left and right like this. And then use your throttle, which I think is A and B buttons on an Xbox. Um, and then you can move the stick left and right to move, you know, laterally, left and right. So it's like easy mode on a helicopter, kind of, I guess. Or if you've ever tried to fly like the uh, Airbus, what is it, the H-135? Um, those things, when you put them in realistic mode, it's so hard. You, you're always correcting with the rudder. But because this flies more like a drone, it's just much, it's much more beginner friendly. Yeah, we'll lower the gear. Thanks for the reminder. And then the landing gear button, if you don't have a shortcut enabled, there's just a little LDG button right here you can hit. And you just pull your throttle out really slowly and if you're going too fast down, you just add some throttle. Just so easy to land. And it does have like little, there are little wheels on the bottom of the landing gear. There's not, they're not just like stilts, but. And then just pull the throttle out. Yeah, there's little tiny, little tiny wheels, but yeah, I really doubt this thing is meant to be landed like a traditional plane. Like there's just, there's just like no clearance here. <laughs> like if this was tilted back, I don't know. It does, it does have this kind of cutaway right here, this angled cutaway. I don't know, maybe. I'm sure I'm sure somebody will f I mean, we could try it a little bit later. Biden's plane. Dude, the black one looks awesome. There's so many different liveries. This one's just like all blacked out. I don't know what Miko's flying, but it shows him in like a it shows him in a diamond or something. <laughs> I'm not sure what it shows him in. <laughs> this is Miko. This is you right here. I don't know what it's got you in, but... <laughs> oh, maybe it, uh... Maybe it's not... If you're on Xbox, maybe it's not recognizing you in a... In the Pelican. Dude, the black one looks amazing. All we need to do is uh, switch the depth of field. There we go. It's pretty cool. Hey, they're holding hands. <laughs> are they making the heart symbol with their hands? Microsoft, aw. It's 
Sorry, I'm moving uh, moving the drone camera around with my uh, help for Pride Week. <laughs> I'm moving my uh, camera around my keyboards. It's not the smoothest uh, camera work here. I think we should just take this downtown San Diego then. Try landing it in flight mode. Uh, oh, Prospect, you can open the back ramp. Someone in chat showed me. Here, let me show you now that they showed me. So all you have to do is uh, Hit this little button right here. This switch is the cargo ramp. Uh, yeah, Paul, there are 13 liveries for it. And then also, Paul, you can, if you use your camera movement and go sideways, you can move yourself back and you can open these little panels will, will open and close the doors along the way. But yeah, this is, uh, this is a little switch for the cargo door right here. Thanks to, I forget who told me in chat. Sorry, I forgot who, who let us all know. But yeah, this little switch right here. And then these three switches are for anti-icing systems. So I think it's uh, anti-ice, pedo heat, and then windshield. So if you're flying, uh, Flying anywhere super cold, you're flying around in Colorado or whatever. We're at Miramar, KNKX on USA West. I'll put that in the chat again. And I think I'm just gonna fly, let's close the cargo door and all these inner doors and let's fly to, uh, let's just fly around downtown San Diego really quickly. So it's in hover mode, so all I have to do is just apply some throttle and we just take off. Uh, Paul, you can you can add a flight plan from the world map. Um, what it's gonna do is it'll put all the waypoints in for you, like it like it shows on the VFR map. But there, the autopilot itself will not follow the flight plan. There's no nav mode, but there is a heading mode, so you could fly it. Um, you could fly point to point yourself, but it will import it and it will show on the map screen right here. So when you're in here and you switch to map. It'll show all the waypoints. And then this right here in the top right is a range knob. So you could fly waypoint to waypoint. All right, let's fly. Let's just fly to the east then. Or sorry, to the south towards San Diego. Yes, we have more. The crew is growing. <laughs> this is so cool. It's so weird that this is in Microsoft Flight Simulator too, right? It's just like... Alright, we need to head, yeah, just this direction, right to San Diego. Can you use the original Halo color? Uh, I don't have it on. I can switch for another flight, sure. But they're, yeah, the, like, the army green, the dark green is the original color. And it can't go to space. We tried, we... We took it to 45,000 feet. It seems like that's the limitation. It's about 45,000 feet. Well, if you want to fly it, it's in uh, it's in Microsoft Flight Simulator and it's free. So they released the Pelican for free today. I think it just happened like six hours ago or something. Um, and if you don't have Microsoft Flight Simulator, you can. It's on Xbox Game Pass. So. Um, this plane is included on the Game Pass version. The Pelican is. So you can just get Game Pass, download Flight Sim, download the plane from the marketplace for free. It was misleading when they showed it in space. Yeah, yeah. Downloading on the Xbox now. Yeah, if you guys don't have Game Pass and you, if you haven't played Microsoft Flight Sim before, um, you can start for like, at least in the United States, it's like $1 for your first month. So you could play Flight Sim and fly around the Pelican for an entire month for a dollar. And then just, you know, don't renew the subscription. Yeah, um, you know, unless you keep playing the game, of course. Game Pass is just a great value. The only downside to getting Game Pass for Microsoft Flight Sim really is there are there are five planes that come with the Flight Sim Deluxe Edition and five other planes that come with the Premium Edition. So, unless you need any of those 10 planes, you can get by with just the base edition of the game. 
And some of those planes are like the Cirrus SR-22 is in the premium edition. And um, I think, what what's in the deluxe? I think it's like the Cessna 172 with like the old school steam gauge controls. Um, but yeah. Uh, not every single button is operational, but they've done quite a bit. There's like, there's an autopilot, there's hover and cruise mode. Um, there is a, there's a map, there's a, like a heads up display. It's not, not an actual heads up display, but you know, your like primary flight instruments are in there. The cargo door opens, there's anti-icing systems. Did I miss, where's downtown? And I'm just flying in hover mode still, so like we can go a lot faster than this. Oh, is it over there? I think that's the airport right there. It's just really, uh, it's really foggy. Really cloudy. So what I can do is just switch in. I'm gonna hit a button to switch into cruise mode. So now we're just in like a normal flying mode. Yeah, there's downtown San Diego, it looks like. I think this is San Diego Airport right in front of us. Yeah, this thing hauls, it's going like 300, 300 knots. <laughs> That's funny, so you, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty drastic when I just switch from cruise mode to, uh, from cruise mode right over to hover mode, but I, I don't know the I don't know the best way to do that actually, because you're gonna be flying at a decent speed, like over a hundred knots at least. Um when you're in cruise mode, so it's a little weird. Overspeed seems too low. So does max altitude. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, I I think I think my max ground speed was what were we at like five hundred or something, maybe? Oh, you're in the F-14, David. Sweet. I don't know. I don't know if I have the F-14, so it probably just shows you as like a little single-engine prop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there are a few bugs in it. I mean, this is just like the ultimate, uh, the ultimate sightseeing vehicle now. Just because its max speed is so much higher than something like the Velocity drone that they that they did last year. So you can just like fly this around Vegas and stuff. Fly it around wherever. Yeah, the VTOL's unnatural looking. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're not officially even introducing helicopters into the sim until the end of the year. Um, though there have been a bunch of developers that have made helicopters, like the Hype Performance Group. They made um, the Airbus like H-135 and H-145, I think. And those are, um, you know, they work. The, the game, like the model for the flight in the game wasn't even made, wasn't even made to support helicopters in vertical flight yet. So they're probably hacking it together the same as those groups did with their, uh, with the helicopters they made, so. Yeah, we'll see if it gets improved at the end of the year because they're um, in November, the 40th anniversary edition is happening and they're introducing helicopters natively. So they're giving away two two helicopters and they're giving away, um, I think it's like six or eight different planes. There's a couple classic planes like the Wright Brothers plane and a few others. But yeah, we'll see if uh, maybe the model will get become more realistic then. You know, they did that lately too with all the new propeller dynamics they put in in the last update so a few planes are using that to make it more realistic flight models so the like grand caravan and the 172 i think are both using the new propeller model 
Oh, it was pretty nuts when they showed that off too. Just like the the animations they made were pretty cool. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does float very statically. <laughs> Oh, predictions on the world update? I haven't, I haven't really read about it at all yet. I don't know what. Did they announce? Uh, is that world update eleven? Oh, land on the carrier. It's weird. I wonder which plane this is. We got a, we got a good amount of. Uh, we got a good amount of pelicans here. This one looks like, is this the original color right here? That Phoenix is in? Yeah, this looks like more of the original color right here. Oh, I got too close, he disappeared. I don't know if everyone has this aircraft carrier or it's part of a mod that I have. It might be part of a mod. I think um I think I have the carrier's mod that's in a or I have I have the San Diego I think I have San Diego landscape. <laughs> Either it's here for everyone or they're landing on like some random rock or something. No idea. <laughs> this is pretty epic looking though. I mean, I don't know. This is it's just fun. Here's the orange one. This one's pretty cool looking too. Yeah, like a bright pink one. <laughs> it's tap dancing a little bit for us. Uh, we're, we landed on the aircraft carrier at uh, in San Diego, right off downtown San Diego. No, I'm not sure if this is uh, an add-on I have or not. I have a bunch of scenery from the marketplace, so it might be part of that. All right, is this the original green right here? I think the one that Phoenix is in might be the original. I went with the with the blue digital camo one. I think these guys might just be hovering and there's nothing here for them. <laughs> this, this one's black and green. I think the original is just all green. Wow, the, f the frames are... <laughs> <no>. <laughs> yeah, the frames are really, uh, really taking a hit right now. In the original, oh, but all I see is a bonanza. I wonder why that is. Yeah, it's kind of weird. I don't know, maybe it's because, uh, maybe it's just a platform thing? Look at the Harrier. Oh, the plane, the planes that are landed? Oh, wait, is this the Harrier right here? I'm not super, uh, keen on military planes, I don't know exactly. I know the Harrier has a has VTOL capability, right? Uh, no, that's not a Harrier, right? I can't tell. You guys will have to tell me. I don't, I don't know about all this stuff the way you guys do. I thought the Harrier has like the vertical thrusters mounted underneath the wings.
Oh, they're right there. I see it. Yeah, it's this. I see it. Yeah, this is just like a really low res model. It looks like just from the aircraft carrier add on. So they just have these static static planes here. There's not a. Uh, it's very simple. <laughs> All right, been here a while. All right, I guess we have to try to land this thing at Miramar in uh, in the cruise mode, which is going to be a horrible idea because there's no. I mean, I don't think it's it's meant to be landed that way. <laughs> I don't know if anybody is up on the Halo lore, but we can't set the waypoints uh, ourselves. Oh, is someone in the red one? Loki's in the or Loki Loki is in the red one. It looks like. There's like 30, I think there are like 13 different ones. Yeah, it does have wheels. But I don't know if that's just to like cushion the vertical landing, you know, since there, it's not just going to have like stilts. Or if it's, um, or if it's meant to be landed that way. Oh, and he's gone. And yeah, the red one, I don't know if that's red or like the hot pink one. Usually lands VTOL, it can land like a plane in the games. Oh, really? All right, we'll have to see if it works. I'm sure I'll butcher it too. I've never, uh, haven't tried it yet. Yeah, it is free. Um, it's in the marketplace, EKF. All right, let's get some altitude and then uh, let me just make sure I have it on the map here. I'll have to like fly around the airport a bit, see where it is. I mean, we could just land at, um, we could just land here at San Diego. This runway is pretty long. All right, so I'm gonna switch to cruise mode. Whoa. The transition from like hover to cruise is a little uh, jarring. Over speeding already. All right, pulling the throttle way back here. Uh, which San Diego scenery is that? I'll have to check it out. It's probably, it's probably from the marketplace. Sorry, I'm pulling the throttle way down. There we go. Um, it's probably from the marketplace. I'll have to check it, uh, Chris, to see exactly which one it is. I'm not sure if there are multiple ones available or not. Should have made the controls like the VTOL hair and DC yet. Yeah, I mean, you know, DCS is on another level of realism with, uh, with the VTOL stuff. You know, Microsoft didn't uh, create this with any of those in mind, I don't think, from, from the start, so. But we'll see what happens at the end of the year with the, with the, um, with the release of the uh, helicopters and if that gives them and all the you know third-party devs more capability when it comes to VTOL stuff and to helicopters. Like I imagine once the new helicopter physics are in, a lot of things are gonna improve on all the existing helicopters and you know even planes like this and like the Velocity Drone and all those. All right, I've totally lost the airport. We're going way too fast. So I'm gonna turn all the way around. And the, it's like kind of a li pretty limited view inside this thing too. It's hard to look around. I keep switching to third person mode because these camera presets aren't super helpful. Like this is the glance right preset. You just get like that little corner in the top right that you can see through. All right, I see downtown over there. Can't wait to get stalked by a pelican while I'll be doing GA flights, yeah. We thought like the uh, the interception, or like people intercepting each other with the, uh, with like the super hornet was nuts. This is gonna be at another level, I think. All right, we're at 173 indicated. I don't think, I, I have no idea what this is supposed to land at. I think our stall speed was 70, about 70, so 
we would want our approach speed to be what, like 1.3 times that or so? So we probably want to approach about 90 to 100. All right, there's downtown. It's gonna be hard with all, this, all these clouds here too. Just gonna have to get low and then. Uh, can the ramp open in mid-flight? Uh, yeah, actually it can. Here, wait, let me turn autopilot on real quick. Yeah, I did that earlier that we could do it again. And then I'm just gonna sync the heading up here. I'm gonna go into altitude hold and heading mode so we don't crash. Uh, but yeah, you can just flip this switch. I don't know if it'll, um... Yeah, you can. I don't know if there's, um... Any limitations on this where at a certain speed you can't open it. It'll, like, you know, give you a black screen of death. You know, say the game over, basically. Uh, sometimes that stuff is in there where, like, yeah, if you open a window going too fast, it'll just end the game. It'll be like, yep, you're done. <laughs> Um, I guess I could play with the autopilot a little bit more, so... Alright, San Diego is just off to our right side. So the airport's like down in that mess somewhere. Oh, is that the runway right there? Oh yeah, that is the runway right there. So we'll come in from the other side, I guess, from the ocean. Though I think... Oh, landing... I think they land coming in over the city. Like, from this direction. Um, but there's a heading mode, and so we could, uh, we could use heading mode, and we can use the, um, select mode here on the altitude. So altitude selection knob is this, oh, whoops, I just turned the wrong one. Uh, altitude selection knob is this second one here, this bottom left one on the autopilot controls. So if we change that, we can, it's changing that magenta number right there. So we can change that down to, let's say, I don't know. 2,500 feet for now. And then we can just hit uh, vertical speed and it's on either down or up. So it'll take us down to our selected altitude and then it'll switch to altitude hold mode. So here we're at 2,500 is our target. We're at 3,000. You can see it's already easing up a little bit. And now it's going up a little bit. Oh yeah, we can also turn on auto throttle. I haven't used that yet. So if I hit auto throttle on the on the autopilot, same with the altitude. Here's our auto throttle setting. It's at 112 knots, so we can just use. I think it's the top right one here. Yep, the top right one changes our target airspeed. So now we have auto throttle on. For some reason, it's not bringing us down to. Not bringing us down to 2,500 yet. It could be that I had to, uh, maybe it's just, I don't know. Still vertical speed. Okay, it's going negative again. All right, we'll see how that works. So anyway, yeah. You can't believe the trailer was misleading with the space thing. Maybe there, maybe it's just a bug. Like, yeah, it would be weird for them to put that in the trailer and you not be able to do it. Maybe you have to, like, disable the flight model or some of the realism settings to allow it to go up there. All right, now we're descending again. Slowly, 500 feet a minute. Alright, then I'll zoom in a little bit. Alright, then I'm just going to turn to the west. Just play with the autopilot a little bit. And it's nice with the auto throttle. I mean, we can make sure that we're not going to stall. We can make sure we're not going to overspeed. It's so funny, that little, like, sputtering sound that it's making. NXI upgrade soon, I hope. Um, there... I think you guys saw this stuff in the working title Discord. So they had, a uh, They had previewed a few things. They previewed a few things, so like the radar altimeter and um, what backcourts approaches and weather radar. So hopefully soon with the NXI stuff. 
Pelican description says this is restricted for civilian use, but restriction can be removed with some remote authorization. Oh, wait, are you talking about the space? Does it do nav hold? The autopilot only has heading mode, vertical speed mode, auto throttle, and altitude hold. Um, so it, you're not going to like be flying an RNAV approach or an ILS or anything with this thing. But it's good enough to, you know, it's holding our altitude. Like this is super helpful. It's holding our airspeed. It's holding our altitude. And I switch over to the radar map and I'll just uh, use the heading bug to fly us around. Um, and if you have shortcuts for like heading bug and stuff, like I have them on my Bravo, so I can just use a use my throttle uh, or my throttle quadrant to use the shortcuts, little knobs on it to change this stuff. So it makes it easy. All right, we should go down lower. I forgot the airport elevation. We're just gonna do this by just gonna do this by eye, we're just eye, eyeballing this. Uh, vertical speed mode down. What's weird is I changed the selected altitude to 1500 and it looks like it started descending automatically even before I enabled vertical speed mode. Keeps going upward when I just want it to fly centered. If you're talking about altitude Rambo, do, um, are you using, if you're using the autopilot, make sure you set the selected altitude and then use vertical speed like this. This is the selected altitude knob here. Or sorry, this is the heading knob. This is the selected altitude knob. So you want to set, set it to your target altitude. All right, let's check the map again. Yeah, I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Swing us around. And I think we're going to want to be a little more this way. The runway is face. Yeah, more this direction, I think. Is that a super hornet? I don't have all the jets. I, I wish. <laughs> There's, it's so funny just getting. Uh, I mean, we're going 110 knots, so kind of everything can pass by us right now. I think that's the airport right over there. I haven't flown into San Diego forever. All right, let's swing it around this way. Overshot it. We're very low. Okay, I think where is the airport? Right out. Whoops. I think fifteen hundred feet might be a little bit too low. It's gonna be right out here, I think. Oh, it's uh, it's kind of, it's like too slow. It's like, it's like, going left and right, wavering past the uh, selected heading. <laughs> Can you move the engines to VTOL position? So I, uh, somebody else pointed this out earlier. I wasn't as familiar with the Pelican as them, but the uh, these engines stay horizontal like this. The VTOL thrusters are these guys right here. So they actually don't, they don't rotate. I thought these would rotate down, but they don't. It just uses these thrusters right here on the bottom. It needs to be the fastest in the game, seeing as it's a spaceship. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. All right, and it looks like we gained altitude again, even though, I don't know, we're at 1300. Huh. All right, I guess we're okay. I'm totally uh, disoriented here, I don't, oh, I see the lights, I think. Yeah, there's the runway light right there. All right, let's, let's just turn off autopilot and switch back to the map. Just gonna zoom. Uh, well, we'll be able to see it. Uh, if you have an afterburner mapped, it'll change. Yeah, yeah. I noticed. I found that out earlier, but you guys already seem to know it. It doesn't bank on Xbox. Jay, it's in hover mode by default. So this switch right here chooses between drone mode and cruise mode. So if you want to fly it like a plane, turn the switch up. And if you want to fly it like a drone, turn the switch down.
Oh no, there's the airport over there. All right, this is gonna be a bad landing. All right, landing gear's coming down. I think it stalls at 70 knots, so I just need to keep it faster than 70. The frame rate here is not super helpful either. We're trying to see if we can land it uh, horizontally instead of vertical landing. I can't see anything out of this thing. All right, there's the runway right there. All right, we're at 104 knots. We'll see, it'll probably just crash and burn. I don't, I don't know what to expect. 93 knots, we, we pretty much want 90. To like chop and drop. All right, we're at 95. Yeah, hover mode hover modes very fun and very easy. Uh-oh, we're stalling. No, we're stalling. Rip. Hover mode. Hover mode, save us. Yes. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Dude, it's so hard. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, just for science, I'm going to see if I can switch Oh, my frame rate is really dropping hard here. Uh, I'm going to see if I can switch. I'm just going to cheat here. I'm going to back up. <laughs> That's like uh, pulling the chute in a Cirrus, but way more forgiving. I'm just going to back up like this and line it up and then switch back to cruise. Okay, we, we stalled it more like 85, it looked like. When we were really high up, I, I didn't get the stall until we were like 70 when I did the power on stall but yeah definitely need to come in faster it's weird when you're flying like in this mode too how it like jerks around like you see the camera kind of jerking around a lot I think that's just really a limitation of of the flight model Oh man, this is, uh, we're at 180 knots, which I think is way too fast. It's so hard to get it to slow down. I mean, we're just way too, we're way too, uh, fast, way too high, way too fast. Yeah, this is, this is going to be really hard, uh, hard to fly to land vertically or horizontally. I really do, I just need a better approach, honestly, of course. It's uh it's hard to describe like it's um it's definitely going to take some getting used to flying at this in this mode. Uh, it still flies upwards, not sure how to fly center. Doesn't let you fly down. So if Rambo, if you're in drone mode, so when you're in drone mode, you use the throttle to fly up and down. Seen a pelican land horizontally in one of the games. Maybe it just like came in horizontally like it was still in hover mode, but just had had a lot of like lateral movement going on instead of just coming straight down from the top. At the airport hit VTOL to slow down. <laughs> yeah. I just save, save myself by just switching to the hover mode at the last second. All right, let me just give it a ton of speed and get way out into the water and try to line this up better. In flight mode, but the Pelican flies upwards without you going upwards. I mean, it does, it is gonna pull like up, like I'm, I'm pushing down really hard on the nose right now to keep it down and and using my pitch trim cuz yeah it is it it gets going really fast like a helicopter with wheels it's still a uh, i want to try to land it this way <laughs> sorry that overspeed warning there we go yeah i need to keep the throttle about uh you can see it's at like 45 or 30% right now that little uh That'll indicator down here. The little magenta one is the percentage of throttle. 
So we're going 300 knots and it's like under 50% throttle right now. Land around 170. Hardly flare, okay. So if the stall, I feel like, yeah, maybe it's just not, I can't use like the normal rules of thumb, like what normal like final approach speed you want, like a, what is it, 1.3 extra stall speed, full flap stall speed. Hey, Happy. Yeah, it's in the marketplace. The, the big update isn't until in November, but they released the Pelican today. So it's for free. It's for free in the marketplace right now. And we're at San Diego right now, KSAN. I'm just trying to land it vertic land it horizontally to see if I can do it. Um, seems pretty difficult. <laughs> How do you open the back door? It's this switch right here. This bottom right switch, the last switch on this panel opens the cargo. And the doors in the cockpit have a little panel that you can use to uh, to open them. The doors leading out to the cargo. All right, I see the runway light. And we're at 209 right now. Uh, I'm totally the wrong, wait, what? How did I get turned around so much? Oh my God. So bad at flying. All right, there's the airport. We're flying perpendicular to it. Wait, I'm so, con there's another, what is this right here? Wait, this isn't San Diego. San Diego's, San Diego's over here, right? Right there. This is something else. I don't know what airport this is. Have I figured out how to go to space? No, I, I could only get up to uh, 45,000 feet. Was not able to go into space. I know I have the landing gear down the whole time. Oh, this is an air base. Uh, okay, yeah, that's not, that's not San Diego. Master Chief needs to exfil. No flaps or brakes, just throw out all the rules. Lands a little hard. Like the Dark Star, got it. Yeah, I have a feeling this thing's gonna, it's gonna be unhappy when I touch the ground. The visibility inside of it's really uh, not good too. This is fine. The weather is, it's just a perfect day for this too. Yeah, 40,000 feet's nothing, I know. Yeah, I think I got to 45. Someone else in chat said they got to 50. I'm just having a really hard time finding the airport. <laughs> All right, there it is. 184. Injured Marines to save. Is there a way to send a clip? Uh, you can do it in Discord if you want, Miko. Uh, it should be linked in the video description. Oh man, the frame rate saved me. All right, we're at 162. I'm way too high. I also don't know how to judge like how tall this thing is either. 
Oh, two seven. Yeah, I know two seven's normally the runway they use. I'm at idle and we're not dropping at all. I'm just completely idle right now. I'm just gonna have to like nose it in. This is, this is we're at the end of the runway. Does it even have brakes? I don't even know if the brakes work. Yeah, you can't even uh you can't even use rudders. <laughs> I guess that works. We're landing in the uh <laughs> Alright. Yeah, there's you can't even use rudders on the ground, right? There's, there's once it touches down, you can't steer. <laughs> I guess that worked. <laughs> It was very shady. <laughs> we just have a whole armada here, it's awesome. Crowd breaks, yeah, no flaps, no spoilers. Oh, my landing gear won't come up anymore, actually. Yeah, the landing gear is st <laughs> stuck down. <laughs> I think it's a bit like damaged or something. <laughs> Dude, all these flights, I wonder if people, uh, anybody flying right now is probably really confused. They're just like, probably pelicans at every airport. At every major airport just flying around right now. <laughs> Ready to do war with the Covenant. <laughs> I mean, the sounds are really cool though. Yeah, like the the sounds they added from Halo are rad. Man, the, the frame right here is just dying though. I'm sure it looks choppy on the stream. Shouldn't have picked San Diego. Yeah, I definitely busted the gear. The gear, uh, the gear refuses to come up. The hot pink one's pretty cool. Bubba Daboo's hot pink pelican. Looks pretty awesome. <laughs> it's just like an invasion right now. It's great. <laughs> and I'm the one dork with the gear up, with the gear still down because it, it won't go up. Um, I kind of want to go. I don't know somewhere else. Do you guys have any uh, suggestions where you want to fly around? It'd be, I guess it'd be pretty cool to fly, just like fly in um, plane mode through some like canyons and stuff. Fly through like, uh, I don't know, maybe like Alaska. We can go up to Alaska and fly around there. It could be fun. I'm going to go back to the main menu. I'm also going to put in a flight plan real quick just to show the waypoints. Because it does show the waypoints on the um, world map. Yeah, I'll change color too. Change delivery. Um, let me go back and turn music off. I normally have the music off, but I turned it on because you can play the Halo music in the cockpit on this DVD player, which is pretty hilarious. Um, all right. Yeah, here are all the liveries. So I assume, yeah, this just straight up green is the original one. Approach into Juno. We could land a Juno. Yeah, I, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to try the horizontal landing anymore. That just, I mean, you can't even steer it on the ground. So it's, I don't know. Yeah, I guess, I guess you could land it straight. But I mean, if you have no nose wheel control, then once you land the plane, like, what are you going to do? <laughs> you're just going to revert to hover mode. If you, if you, if you're just misaligned a little bit on the runway, you can't even steer it. So, all right, I'll go with the default here. Yeah, no problem, Words. We'll look at the original green. All right, yeah, let's just go. I think Alaska might be cool, just because uh, everything looks amazing there. And it'd be cool to just put in the waypoints just to see what they look like. Oh, that we can do. We can do Elmendorf, maybe Air Force Base. How far is that from? Okay, that's Anchorage. I'm not super familiar with Alaska. Where's Juno down here? Kodiak. I don't know where Juno is. 
J U N E A U. Juno. Oh wow, Juno's way down this way. 560 nautical miles. It's a little too far. Well, let's go. This isn't too bad. I just want to find something south. Is this a. Uh... That's a little better. 59 minutes, though. I wonder if it's taking into account the actual speed of this. Can you do desert area like Egypt and pretend it's Halo 3? <laughs> we could do that next. I want to fly around like Alaska just has such awesome, uh, awesome mountainous areas. All right, let's do this. Let's do White Horse. This isn't too far. Uh, maybe that is too far. I don't want to be doing it forever. We can literally take off from anywhere, so it doesn't really matter, right? Like, we just take off from anywhere we want. All right, let's do this. This is random airport here, Skagway. P-A-G-Y to P-A-J-N. And then I'm going to choose... Oh, there's not a, there aren't waypoints. Ah. Let me just add a... I'll just add this as a waypoint here just because I want to see I want to see the different waypoints on the map just to see how they work. All right. I'm just adding that one waypoint at Haynes, which is a seaport. So P-A-G-Y to P-A-J-N. And I'm just going to start right on the runway so we don't have to do the startup. All right, yeah, we can fly. We can fly around Egypt with it. That would be cool. I'll do that after this, and then, then we'll call it a night. Call it a day. Yeah, this is this is pretty awesome. I just had to hop on and check it out. It has it has an autopilot engage button on the plane, so I'm naturally interested in it right off the bat. Papa Alpha Golf Yankee traffic November two two Kilo India Papa taking off th runway two zero south departure. I think I have the Orbex Alaska mesh. Whoa. <laughs> What is going on here? <laughs> All right. Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> We're flying already. <laughs> that was that was interesting. It just took off automatically. <laughs> what the heck? That was so weird. It just like it just took off on its own. Zucked is here. All right, my gear is operational again. Bubba's here. Man, that just stands out, doesn't it? That, like, hot pink. So let me see the waypoints. So I'm, I, on the map, you can see the waypoints um, here. So yeah, you can see the flight plan. So that's pretty, it's convenient yeah, if you want to fly like a longer flight with a bunch of waypoints, do like an IFR flight plan, load it up in VATSIM and tell them you're in a, you're in a Halo Pelican and they'll tell you to get the hell off the network. <laughs> Alright, looks like we're going this way. Uh, thanks for joining, David. Yeah, sorry, I get sometimes I get a little distracted and uh, I want to like look at the systems and stuff. All right, let's switch to cruise mode.
Yeah, so as far as the autopilot, there's no nav mode, so your only option is really just to use, uh, choose heading mode and just, you know, fly it, fly it by hand, hand autopilot, basically. Uh, I'm just flying to the, we're flying south, right? We're on a 178, or it's on a, on a south heading. We're gonna go, uh, to Juno. But I did add one more waypoint in here. And we're overspeeding already. Yeah, I feel like it would be cool if if it the overspeed was less. Yeah, I'm like I'm not at 50% throttle and just overspeeding all the time. Like I want to fly this thing really fast, but it doesn't want me to. It's funny this these cliffs here look really funny. Yeah, my throttle's at like 50%, 45%, still overspeeding. Wish it wasn't night so I could join. Yeah, well, I'm just gonna fly for another, I don't know, maybe another 30 or 60 minutes and be done, but uh, I mainly wanted to look through the, uh, look through the systems, you know? So I hear, I'm using my pitch trim wheel and I hear a clicking sound, like it's using something in the cockpit, so there must be a pitch trim somewhere in this thing. Let's see if I can see anything moving. No, I, actually I don't see it. That sound, I think it's just rain or something. <laughs> this is really cool looking though. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess if you don't want the overspeed sound, just uh, fly in third person. Fly in external camera mode the whole time. Yeah, the trim definitely works. I don't know. It might be on the stick in the cockpit. Yeah, this overspeed warning is going to get so annoying. I wish, uh... Oh, you can turn off the overspeed sound? How? Is it one of these switches? Oh, there we go. The little warning light right there. Oh, shit. Wasn't paying attention. Almost crashed. Oh, yeah, there you go. You're right. It's right there. Cool. All right. Forget overspeed now. We're good. Uh... So we'll turn on the anti-ice. It looks like the pedo heat was on automatically. Whoa. Oh, rip. <laughs> well, that was, uh, uh that was that. <laughs> I'm going to restart. I guess, uh, I guess maybe following the overspeed rules is a good idea. So you could, yeah, turn off critical damage and then, uh, turn off the overspeed warning and fly as fast as you want. Let's do that just so I can catch, I'll catch up to the other guys. Oh, the trim's on the stick. Yeah, it, it looked like a little hat button on the stick. All right, let me go into assistance and failure and damage, and I'm just going to turn all the damage off so we can uh, fly whatever speed we want. All right. All right, let me go catch up. Alright, and here's the little warning. Yeah, you just click that little warning button right there for the master warning and get rid of the overspeed warning. But if you don't turn off the, uh, don't turn off the damage, then the, you're just gonna blow up. Yeah, I'm using a lot of trim too. I mean, we're going, uh, alright, 477 knots right now indicated, so. Yeah, I'm giving it a lot of nose down trim on the wheel. I just keep, um, I keep nosing down while I'm talking to you. I just keep hitting it. Um, and I'm still not quite level yet. Hey, Coda. Best stream ever. First streamer I've seen that interacts with the chat. Hope you do more streams. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, I, I, I was doing streams for a bit, and then some people just wanted more tutorials, but the streams are really easy to get going. The tutorials are, you know, a lot more work to put together than firing up a stream. 
Um, but I am gonna I am gonna make tutorials on all the upcoming Garmin stuff, all the working title stuff that's coming up. I'll I'll be making more tutorials on those and. Yeah, I took a break for a while because there weren't many updates coming, and I was just playing other games for months, so... Playing games with my family and stuff. I like my siblings, but... I appreciate that, man. Yeah, I like doing the streams. I could I could see doing a weekly one again, just doing Sunday streams. Um, you know, when there's new stuff like this that comes out, it's much easier. It gets less stale. I always little... You know, I always kind of worry that it's going to get boring if I'm just doing the same thing every single time, but... You know, I guess I guess that's what all streamers do, right? Everybody I watch, like, they play the game they play. They, I watch the game they play. It's that simple. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jason. All right, I didn't bring the map up, so let's bring the map back up. It looks like we're headed pretty much the right direction. So we're just going to fly it like... Uh, how fast are we going right now? Mach 0.74 so far. Someone said they got it up to Mach 1.5 in a dive, I assume. What other games? Uh, I just play I just play a bunch of games casually with friends, you know, like I'll play Fortnite or Rocket League or, you know, whatever. Just all the all the popular casual games, I guess. I was trying League of Legends for the first time like last month. It's all right. <laughs> it's <laughs> I, I play a bunch of different games, but uh, off stream. Nothing I would really ever stream. This is just what I want to stream. But yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with Rocket League the last few nights. It's a bit more casual, but man, it gets uh, it gets competitive too. <laughs> it's just going crazy because of the over speed right now. Every one of those little shakes would be ending the... Uh, Ending the flight for us if we didn't have damage turned off. Alright, let's turn the map back on. We're almost there already. This will be the shortest flight ever. Just want to fly over these mountains. Yeah, all the like, uh, all the shaking that's happening right now is, it's making it hard to control, kind of. You can tell it just wants to go to a black screen and end the flight. Oh wait, how do I get to that camera? It looks like if you just hit down once on your, on my hat, I just hit down once and we get that camera, which is cool. I need this synthetic vision right now though in this weather. And to keep my eye on the map at the same time. Alright, we're off course. <laughs> yeah, this thing is just going crazy right now with the shuddering. Got it up to Mach 3 in a dive after I slewed a space. 13 or 14 Gs. <laughs> oh cool, it looks like it auto-completes the legs too. So as you cross each one, you can see that one. Our first leg from PAGY to that, uh, that spot right there to automatically remove the leg. So that's cool. Uh oh. In IMC. We're in danger zone right now. Just did this flight in the, oh, the Hype 145. Yeah, now that's something that actually takes skill to control. Like this thing, I mean, this thing is tricky in cruise mode. It's a, it's a little weird. Um, but in a hover mode, you know, it flies just like a drone, so it's super easy. Nothing like flying the 145 or the 135. That takes a lot of skill. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Alright, good thing we have synthetic vision or I would be in the mountainside right now. The default camera view isn't too bad in this. I think if I change my zoom level to like this... I should just do that, actually, is just change... If you go under general camera, you can just change the default zoom level. So if I just change this out to zero and apply. Now this is my new default. It's more like fisheye. So I can see the, both the map and the synthetic vision all at the same time. It's pretty good. Uh, do I think it's worth it to upgrade basic to ultimate? Yeah, so there's, there's the standard edition, then there's deluxe, and then there's premium. 
And yeah, the only difference is Deluxe is a five pack of planes and airports and Premium is a five pack of planes and airports. And Premium Deluxe is just both of those bundles together. Premium plus Deluxe. So unless you want, um, unless you want any of the planes or airports in the Deluxe or the Premium version, you do not need them. And especially if you're on Game Pass, like, I think the dilemma is really for people on Game Pass. If you don't, if you're using Flight Sim in Game Pass, you get the standard edition. You do not need, and you don't need those other planes. You might as well stay on Game Pass. And if you know, um, yeah, I think it, I think it's good for people that play other games on Game Pass to not buy the game outright because you want to take advantage of the like hundred plus other games you get with Game Pass. But if you're just focusing on flight sim and you really want one of the planes that's in deluxe or premium, then your only option is to buy it outright. Finish this flight. And we're trying. We're going. Been a real world pilot for 37 years. Damn, a single piston and turboprop. I still have yet to touch a real plane. <laughs> Tutorials are good, my friend. Very informative. For sim, bleeds over into real world. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jason. Yeah, I haven't yet. Uh, I haven't yet flown a plane myself, but my partner flies. Uh, she's been working on her instrument rating. Yeah, I've been been a couple times with her, and it's. Uh, I definitely get nervous in the planes for sure. Like I'm, I'm nervous in the smaller planes. I think it's just, I don't know, it's just a natural thing, I guess, to be a little nervous. But actually learning more about it, uh, learning more about it, get, you know, makes me less nervous. So, I, you know, I know what's going on. I can understand all the radio calls that are happening and all that stuff. So this is the most, this is just the most boring flight ever because of the, because of the weather. We're just staring into the soup the entire time. Pelican in real life. Yeah, what is the what is the closest you can get to a pelican? I mean, the, yeah, the fog is fun. It's just not pretty. <laughs> Flying an IMC like in the sim is super fun. In real life, I would, uh, you know, I would probably crap my pants. I haven't even. Uh, you know, in like a smaller plane, like when I'm going, when I've gone with my partner a few times, I haven't, uh, haven't been an IMC with them before. So I've never experienced like, yeah, having that front view out of the cockpit of, uh, you know, flying through clouds or flying out of clouds. All right. looks like we're pretty close to Juno. So I'm going to switch to hover mode. This is funny. It's just like cheat mode. Oh yeah. Here we are. All right. Let's slow down a little bit. Just hit the hover button. a little abrupt there but now we're hovering <laughs> this is just the easiest uh all I have is your nameplate and synth vision yep yep that's how I got there too <laughs> yeah synthetic vision and the map all right, now I seem to move over to the airport a little further. I have no idea how low the clouds, how the clouds are here. All right, we're gonna move forward, get over the airport a little bit. All right, what are we at? All right, we're still at 6,000 feet. We're descending pretty fast though, 3,000 feet a minute. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All of a sudden we can actually see something. <laughs> oh, it's cool. You actually have the icing effect on the Pelican too. You can see the little icing here on the wings. Up near the cockpit. Or the flight deck, I guess, if you call it. One or the other. Yeah, br best drone cam, yep. Yeah, I remember when the... I was talking about that velocity uh, drone before when that came out. Actually, this zoom level is kind of too far now. 
um, when that velocity drone came out, that was a really good one, but it was just so slow. And now, yeah, now that this is out and also free, just like the velocity drone is, and this is way faster. Uh, yeah, this is definitely the best sightseeing, best sightseeing plane in the game now. All right, I'm just gonna cut the power so you can see how fast this thing drops. It is straight out of like Halo, how fast it goes down. You're going down like 10,000 feet a second. Or a minute, I mean. I keep saying a second. 10,000 feet per minute. All right, we'll do one more in the desert. Uh, the Osprey has cargo like the Pelican, can hover and cruise like the Pelican. Oh yeah, Osprey with F-35 performance. The wavelengths, that's just the um, radio, so it's the COM1 and COM2 radio. So if I tune into one of them, I'm not sure if the wavelengths change. Let's just tune in. Here, I'll contact Anchorage. Anchorage Center, November 22 Kilo India Papa is at 100 feet, climbing 10,000 feet. November 22 Kilo India Papa Anchorage Center altimeter 29 decimal 84. Yeah, it looks like that's just static. Kilo India Papa, you are one mile east. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect vectors. Visual runway. There we go. Form up. <laughs> oh, here's the green camo. Oh, that looks awesome too. Dude, this, the liveries just look really cool on this. Uh, how do you see the name plates? I uh, just go into general options under traffic. And then there's the multiplayer name plates. The ones I have are a mod though. Uh, if you look in the video description, I put a link to them. They like replace the big default ones. I'm too close to uh, this is subdued. I think I'm too close to him. <laughs> Sorry, he's invisible right now. Somehow I parked in line and can't see you all. If you're really close, it'll like make the other planes disappear. But uh, you know, sometimes the multiplayer can be a little finicky and people will r appear and disappear. Can't go to space, yeah. I wonder if the I bet somebody will figure it out. I bet I bet you can like disable some of the some of the flight model or something to get up there. Cause didn't people do that when the when Flight Sim came out? I'm pretty sure when Flight Sim came out, people were like taking things up into the stratosphere just by changing some of the settings. So maybe it is possible and you just need to change some things. Um the traffic nameplate setting under general right here. Under traffic, it's just right here. Show traffic nameplates, um, and yeah, and if you look on the uh, in the video description for the stream, I put a link to the custom ones I'm using. So those are the green ones. Hit Y and go into slew mode. Yeah, how do I? I don't think I've actually ever used slew mode. Trailer was intentionally misleading and clickbait. I did. Did they put the pel? Did they show this pelican in space on the? Oh, you just mean that? I didn't. I didn't see the spacing until like way in, way later in it. In the trailer, but I mean they didn't lead with like take the pelican into space. I don't know. Maybe there's a way to do it. I, I think we'll find out in the coming hours and days if there's a way to do it. This thing's a hoot. Likely won't become my daily driver, but it's fun. Yeah, it's cool. It's just a cool, like, uh, I don't know. It's cool. You have a Halo dropship in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of fun. All right. Uh, Words wanted us to check out a desert scene to bring, bring the dropship into the desert. So let's do that. You can break the sound barrier. Oh yeah, I didn't go. I don't think I went higher than Mach 1 yet flying it, but. All right. World map. 
Yeah, did they show in the screenshots? I know it was in the trailer. Uh, actually, I wonder what it shows for the stats. Oh yeah, there we go. Max altitude, forty-five thousand feet. So that is what we what we got when we tested it. We couldn't get over forty-five. 210 is seems like such a slow cruising speed though. 5300 miles, 10 hour endurance. Pelican in space was a cosmetic. Yeah, it, yeah, or maybe maybe they're going to maybe they they are going to make it so you can do it later. All right, let's go to Cairo. And let's just add. Let's see, I'll set this as my arrival, but then I'm going to set a bunch of custom waypoints out here. So we're just going to add landmarks. Actually, let's set this over here as the arrival. All right, so we'll go from Cairo and we'll fly by the city. There we go. We have the mosque, the city. Let's put all these POIs in and then the pyramids. Oh, that's the Sphinx. Sorry. I haven't been to Africa before. Oh, we should land out here. All right, there we go. At least we have some guidance there so I, I don't get lost and look uh, stupid for not knowing where all the things are offhand. <laughs> all right, and let's change it to daytime. Let's go like sunrise. All right, see you, Jason. Thanks for hanging out, man. Flying, chip, uh, flying chipmunks tomorrow from Northeast England. Spitfire training base. Well, CFI waiting to happen, do it. <laughs> if I wasn't uh if I wasn't scared of getting in small planes, I might consider it. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe things will change in a few years. I don't know. So far it's just a sim thing. Like I'm I'm primarily a gaming nerd more than a more than a pilot, right? <laughs> but I just really like the all the technical aspects in this sim, so I appreciate that though. For Africa there's a scenery Oh, a scenery that has some platforms and helicopters. Okay, didn't automatically take off this time. That was really weird. The last time it it automatically took off, um, for some reason at that at that other airport. Maybe it's like certain airports if the runway is not big enough or something. I don't know. Why fog? I just have live weather turned on, so. Cell phone batteries at 3%. Bye, I love your channel. Thanks, Coda. Have, have a good day, have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. Um, oh, the assist did the automatic takeoff? Oh, did I turn that on by accident? I turned damage off. I'll, I'll turn damage back on now, just so I don't forget later. I have unlimited fuel on. I usually turn, if I'm not doing like career mode mod or something, I'll, when I'm playing this casually, I have unlimited fuel on all the time. Just great. I just never have to worry about it, especially if you're flying a jet or something. Assisted takeoff off. Yeah, I don't know. All right, our map is on. Let me just change the range a little bit. All right, looks like we're going to be flying to the south first. Um, just to review a few things, I know people keep asking stuff, so I've learned some of this from chat during the stream, but just to review really quickly, if you want the cargo door open, it is this switch right here, the bottom right switch. If you hit that, that'll open the cargo door. 
right there. And then if you want, if you use your camera and turn around, you can hit these little keypads to open the doors. And if you shimmy your way sideways, you can move through the back like this. I think on the Xbox, you can, it's easier. On PC, you have to kind of turn sideways to move this way. Um, and then you can open the next one and get all the way in, into the cargo bay. And yeah, you can do that while you're flying, you can have it open. I'm not sure if there's a speed or something you have. I'm not sure if there's a certain speed you can't open it at. Um, but yeah, that's how you do the cargo door. And then, yeah, these are just your comm radios, but you can change this to engine info or to fuel info with these buttons down here. You got lights and stuff up here. This is the autopilot panel. It has a heading mode. Uh, we'll use that right now to get to the to where we're going. You can't follow the flight plan automatically, but you can uh, just use it to set the heading. So if you switch to the radar map, so you have three things here, the camera, synthetic vision, which has your speed and altitude information, and then radar map. This little bug right here, this little rectangle is your current heading set for the autopilot. So you can change that with this knob right here, or sorry, the bottom left knob. Wait, which knob? Oh, I can't do it right now. I can't do it because we're in hover mode. So once we get going, you hit this button to switch to cruise mode. So instead of flying like a drone, you fly like a plane. When you're in that mode, then you can use autopilot. And everybody is here waiting and I'm a jerk for just sitting here. Yeah, don't forget your landing gear. When you, when you first take off, you just pull the landing gear up. All right, let's go to the pyramids, or we're gonna go to Cairo first, and then we're gonna swing south to the pyramids. All right. And ever, I don't know. Continue for east departure. Oh, okay, we will. Cairo Tower, November two two kilo India Papa. Continue. All right, so if we switch into cruise mode, so now we're. It kind of transitions for a few seconds and then suddenly you have control. So now I have control. And now I can hit the autopilot button. Which is right down here. So that's engaged. I hit a shortcut for that. I can hit altitude hold mode. Here, this top left one changes our... Or the top left one changes our heading. The bottom left one changes our selected altitude. So I just change it to 2500. I'll hit vertical speed mode and up. Oops. Oh, it's already locking on. All right, we're already at 2,500. All right, I'll, let's fly around first in drone mode. I'll, I'll play with this after we do that. Because I know some people have already seen this, but anyway, those are the autopilot controls. All right, so we have our map on. And I'm gonna switch back into hover mode. And just move my camera up like this so we can see. All right, now we're back in hover. So when you're in hover mode, all you have to do is use your throttle to manage your altitude. And then use forward, back, left, and right on your stick to move. So I'm moving towards the city just by pushing forward on my stick. Kilo India Papa, did you hear my last transmission? Cairo Tower November 22 Kilo India Papa Frequency. So if I cut the throttle all the way, we're descending. And you can see that right here. So here's our vertical speed is super low. Uh, this is the throttle indicator. This green spot, when you have the throttle in that area, that's where you're not going to be gaining or losing altitude. So if you want to gain altitude, move it higher than the green dot or the green block. And if you want to lose altitude, move it lower than the green block. But basically, yeah, you're just pulling the throttle in and out to lose and gain altitude. And then I have the map over here, and you can see we're headed towards the first waypoint we put in. So there's a mosque down here we're going to sightsee. Sightsee around Cairo, go to the pyramids. But you can see it's just like really easy to sightsee with this thing. And it's way faster than like the velocity copter, the drone that's in the game. Hey, Bob, what's up? Web trawler, hey J Mac, what's up? Jump out. I, I wonder if anybody's gonna make like I don't make like cinematic videos or anything, but I could see like a Halo super fan like content creator, like using this to create some cool scenes. They could go anywhere they want.
Uh, let me check where the actual mosque is. Let me zoom in the map a bit. Say it's coming up here on the left. I love this shadow too, just like the Halo dropship shadow in Cairo. Pretty cool. And then, uh, oh yeah, and finally, yeah, your rudders are to turn the nose left and right when you're in hover mode or drone mode. It moves pretty fast too, like if you if you flew the velocity one, the velocity one is pretty slow by comparison, like very slow by comparison. This thing goes pretty, pretty fast. I also set the camera to kind of like a fisheye so we can see the, uh, see the map at the same time. Oh, there's the mosque right there. Halo 2 mission outskirts. <laughs> I haven't played Halo in so long. I really need to... I mean, I, I remember playing Reach when that came out. And I played a little Halo Infinite. <laughs> this is so cool. All right, check. We saw the mosque. Let's see what's next. All right, let's see. Over this way. Oh, I just have Cairo and then... Oh, the Great Sphinx is off to the left a little bit once we go this way. <laughs> oh, you can just, yeah, it's so, the drone controls are just so cool because of, yeah, how, like you just let go. Like as long as your throttle is good, you're good. Yeah, no barrel roll, unfortunately. The camera seems a little confused when I like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh, web trawler. That's oh, that's you, Jay. Hey, what's up? <laughs> this is so funny. I feel like we're just like invading cities. Like we got our, our armada. <laughs> we're just going in. <laughs> All right, so let's go to the Sphinx. All right, the Sphinx is over this way. I went and hovered over my house. Phoned in a noise complaint. This is great. I don't know. This is this is so just like uh, unique, you know, like having having the pelican in a one to one world recreation, and just how fast it moves. Just make it makes it really easy to sightsee. This is this is really cool. This is like an intro to helicopter. I mean, this is this is a great, um, you know, it's great that they release this right now. Like it really, oh, this, this is another, I don't know if this is a mosque or what right here in front of us with the green kind of dome on the top of it. it looks really cool too. Um, it's just really cool they, they released this, you know, leading up to November. You know, we have several more months to wait until the helicopters are out and this will hold us over. And I can imagine that once the helicopters are out, they're gonna, um, they're gonna probably like update all the flight models and stuff for all the helicopters to be better. If any pompous hardcore simmers complain about the fact that spaceships are buzzing, I'm sure there are. This isn't the sim I remember. I mean, come on, it's Microsoft. Like there, there are millions of Halo fans. I don't know, my perspective is always that, and I think people got this, uh, I don't know, I think people get yeah, I don't know. Like when it came out on Xbox, people, some people were annoyed about that. And in my opinion, the more people that can play the sim, the better. And if somebody comes to play Microsoft Flight Simulator and stays for all the traditional planes and aircraft and starts learning aviation because they're a Halo fan, they saw that they could fly the Pelican. Like, who? why wouldn't we want that? Like the more people that are flying in the sim, it's better for the game, the longevity of the game. 
it it's more demand for more features like i don't know i only see it as a positive yes i i could see it get annoying when all of a sudden there's like you know 200 of these things flying around new york city but every time they release a plane that does happen like they release a super hornet and they're just jets buzzing every building over and over you can turn multiplayer off if you don't want to see it you know all you have to do is turn multiplayer off you'll never see one of these pelicans and also it'll die down like people people do that kind of stuff for a few weeks and then it, it dies down massively so it's just it's just not a huge deal i understand what they're saying but i totally disagree you know <laughs> But I also am, I'm not a lifelong flight simmer myself. You know, I've only been using the sim for what, going on two years now since it came out. I think two years ago I built this PC and started with X-Plane. So I'm not the hardcore simmer that a lot of these people that have been, you know, simming for decades are. So my perspective is a little different, but you know. Why is, there's, why is there no yaw control? I mean, I'm... Oh, can you... Are you having trouble yawing? It's working for me. You might have to reset your controls. Check, like, the default profile. You might have to change to that. Um, if you've customized any of your uh, controllers and your key bindings and stuff like that. Sometimes doing a reset back to the defaults will fix things. And then you'll have to re-customize anything else. Yeah, I don't think you can barrel roll. Yeah. Well, you can't not... I mean, you can't in uh, in hover mode, I don't think. But you can when it's in cruise mode. Well, I haven't actually tried a barrel roll, I guess. All right, where's the Sphinx? My left. Mm, let me see here. Oh, it's a little off to the right. My blind, where is it? Uh, yeah, after we after we sightsee, I can try a barrel roll. We'll see if it works. I did want to review the autopilot stuff again briefly for people that are interested in that stuff. Where's the Great Sphinx? Oh, here it is. I think the oh the waypoint's just oh yeah. <laughs> Loki's like uh, dude over here. <laughs> That's cool. There's like tour buses out there. <laughs> He's like landing on it. <laughs> now get off the Sphinx back, man. <laughs> So cool. <laughs> There's so many of you guys, this is hilarious. <laughs> All right, we got two of the pyramids right here. And there's more, where, out to the southeast? Pyramid, pyramid, and then another airport. But I'll just fly around after we go to those pyramids and, uh, and just uh, play with the autopilot a bit more just for you guys that may have missed it earlier and don't want to rewind. And then I'll have covered it in two spots, I guess. Yeah, we'll try the barrel roll too.
Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I can already see the other pyramids out there. And the the draw distance is just so good. I think I have it on like max on ultra for like the caching and stuff for um I don't yeah, for level of detail. Actually, level of detail I think I have at the at the default setting. I know this stuff looks even better if you put the terrain level of detail higher than 100. I think you can go up to can you go up to 400 or something now? Let me play a little bit with the graphics settings. Um, render scaling, yeah, 100. Ultra, yeah, my terrain level of detail is at 200, but yeah, you can go up to 400 now. Just want to see what this does besides uh, lag me. Uh, the CD player that plays the music, yeah, somebody showed somebody showed that later. It's somebody showed me that earlier. It's awesome. Well, the pyramids were placed there by aliens, obviously. I mean, it's the only explanation, as far as I know. Yeah, my frame rate took a hit for sure, but I mean, I mean, it definitely looks detailed. The only mod I'm using for the terrain is, um, I just have the Accu season trees turned on. I was using the Bijan ones forever, but um, I've been using the Accu season, the Rex Accu season ones, which are pretty great too. I like that they auto update, so they change like on a week by week basis. It'll change like the foliage and stuff worldwide. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I think they're both amazing. Oh, welcome back, Coda. Dun 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 Yeah, if I turn the uh here if I turn the music back on. I have I have music at zero generally just because it when I'm in the menus it's always playing it, but Oh you can do a barrel roll? Uh that the other like Easter egg here is this little DVD or C or CD player right here. If you hit play, it'll play the Halo theme song. Let's see if I get a copyright strike on my I mean it's a stream, so I don't really care anyway. I mean, it does make it way better. You can just keep this playing the whole time. <laughs> I still use CDs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny that the sound changes when you're in or outside, like the fidelity of it. Oh, that's so cool. They, they really add so many interesting features like... Yeah, when you're in the external view, you get the full fidelity, but when you're inside the cockpit, it's like coming out of a little tiny speaker. You know, it's like coming out of the radio speaker. <laughs> it's like just lower fidelity. Hey, Harriet. <laughs> it's so funny they did that. And then you switch to external. You get all the drums and everything, or full fidelity. Do I have a mod for the other player names? Yeah, Everett, it's linked in the uh, video description. It's called like, uh, it's like, I forget the guy's name, Clompsy's uh, mini nameplates, something like that. Everybody's taking turns landing on the pyramids. This one is quite worn down. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not like a history buff or like a, um, Anything like that. I'm, 
Uh, but I, I don't know like the difference between the each of the pyramids and yeah this one I don't know if it's a in-game thing or if it actually is really worn down like that in real life So I'll have to go look at the other ones to see We got two more right here subdued rats already out there uh, What time is it and I'm in Los Angeles, it's uh, 547 p.m. 1747. <laughs> yeah, that's such a funny effect. <laughs> Kudos to them for that. And that's the level of detail. It's just like unexpected. It's great. We want the true experience or the true cinematic experience. We need to open the cargo door and like do a spinning land, spinning, like spinning around and landing all at the same time. Choreographed. You can see those guys are probably switching into cruise mode real quick to get over there. I'm not sure which pyramids these are. I have to, I'd have to look up the names, but we're, uh, these are the further ones west of Cairo. I know there's some to the... Oh wait, are these the... Yeah, these are the west side ones, I think. I know there are a few more to the south, too. Yeah, I think that's probably just accurate the way that pyramid was, like, more worn down. This one looks a lot more sharp. Yeah, your arms are getting sore from pushing it forward. Yep. I'm using the... Uh, oh, yeah, the alpha. That's got an intense amount of pressure, too. I'm using the Airbus side stick, so it's a little bit easier, but it's still... It's still there. <laughs> Reminds you of Halo 1 Pelican, yeah. The OG color and everything. Alright, now we need to plop the gear down and hit the cargo door. This is fun. I, I totally didn't uh, didn't expect them to do this. It's, I don't know. It's exciting. Hop in the velocity thing. We can compare speeds. <laughs> yeah. What's, I don't even know the velocity's cruise speed. It's probably like 30 or 40 knots or something. This thing is 230. Yeah, somebody could really put together some cool Halo videos with this. <laughs> Not testing the landing gear out, I see. <laughs> uh, I haven't checked. I guess this is the default external view. I haven't cycled through them just yet. Yeah, there's one looking out the cargo door. There's just a couple of them, I guess. Cargo door, the front right wing, basically, and then the... Where is this? Right under the... Underneath the flight deck, I guess. Alright, let's turn the Halo music off before I get banned. Alright, sweet. Um, take off, cargo door closed. Whoa. VFR map, sure. But I will warn you, I'm almost done for the I'm almost done for the day. Uh yeah, we're just south. I think we're south southwest of Cairo. Dude, why isn't the, the VFR map isn't coming up right now? There we go. Oh, the Bent Pyramid. Oh, that's this one right down here. I guess this is the last one in this area.
Uh, how high can you go? You can get to 45,000. I haven't done the barrel roll yet. I'll do that in a second. If I was a YouTuber, I would probably get banned in six minutes. <laughs> okay, this one is totally... I mean, it's cool how... I, you know, of course these are going to be modeled after they look in reality. It's just cool how unique each one looks. Yeah, this one is so, like, soft on the top. I turned the uh, terrain level of detail to um, 400, which is the max, so... I'm sure they'll look different, mattering what... I think I think it's these are depending on the terrain detail that you have set. And we're on the USA West server too, but yeah, I'll be... I'm just gonna try the barrel roll out and then uh and then review the autopilot functions again, show you guys the um all the modes that it has real quick before I call it a diet. The big chungus pyramid. <laughs> Alright, and then the airport we were gonna land at is to the north. So let's fly that direction. All right, let's fly in cruise mode. So yeah, when you switch to cruise mode, it kind of has like this five second transition period like it is right now before it gives you control. I think it just gets the throttle going. I think it gets your, your thrust going forward motion first and then it gives you control. And then same when you switch back to a um, to hover mode, it kind of slows down and locks it in place and then gives you control after a while. All right, let's see if we can do a barrel roll. I'd say we can do a barrel roll. And it didn't, it didn't stress the aircraft enough to end the game, so that's good. I have damage on right now, so that was a little risky. Should have done that. Should have saved that for the very end. And then the overspeed in this is at like 360 knots, right? That just hit it. So you have to keep the throttle like below 50% a lot of the time when you're in cruise. Uh, but somebody else earlier pointed out, yeah, you can silence it. Uh, master warning right here. You can just hit that to silence the warning. But if you have damage on, like I found out earlier, if you if you do have damage turned on in the sim, uh, you might want to turn it off if you want to max out your speed the entire time. Otherwise, it'll give you the black screen, the game over black screen. Max speed and the velocity is 64. All right. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit slower, I guess. Yeah, this thing just feels like cheating, though, when you switch to drone mode. Like, all right, here, airport's coming up right now. It's It's off our right. See, the airport's going to be right down here somewhere. It says it's below us. Oh, there it is. Well, that's a tiny airport. All right, I just hit a button. Switch back into hover mode. This is the little button for hover mode. And also we found out during the stream that if you bind the afterburner button, this is the same as the afterburner button. It'll it'll bind to this so you can switch to hover mode really easily. Now we just cut the throttle and go down at like 10,000 feet a second straight down to the airport. Just push forward on the stick and just go land. <laughs> I mean, it's just so easy. This this will if I I don't have an Xbox, but if I did have an Xbox, I would totally fly something like this around all the time. I mean, it's fast, it's unique, it's fun. And if you're a Halo fan, you're stoked. Covenant dropship, yeah, <laughs> they'd really make people angry. For the people that uh, are annoyed by this kind of thing, I'm sure. I'm kind of curious to read. I don't really want to, but I'm also like fascinated by. It reactions like that or it's just like people get annoyed about things like this and games like this you know the sim crew like we talked about earlier
easy. Oh, nice. It even makes that like that gooch sound when you hit the ground is pretty rad. PMDG guys are probably having a heart attack. <laughs> yeah. All right, I will fly around a little bit more uh, for like 10 more minutes or so and just show you guys the autopilot functionality again. For those of you that want to do like longer flights in this thing, step away and uh, make food and keep it on autopilot or whatever. This is really fun though. Oh, there's the velocity. Miko's here in the velocity. It's like the little baby. <laughs> Dude, I can't get to my drone camera right now. Oh, there we go. Yeah, here's the uh, here's the here's the predecessor. <laughs> oh, one of them has a police. I didn't realize there was one that said police on it. <laughs> this is a runway for ants. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, this is the shortest runway. This might even be a challenge for like the Kodiak. <laughs> Hope they add a Covenant dropship. This is crazy. This is actually a runway. I mean, uh, these things are huge. I mean, the runway numbers alone though. Wait, what are these markers? Are the markers 80, 80 feet, 120 feet? I forgot how long each one of the runway lines are. But this runway has got to be like 400 feet long or something. I noticed that the Northern Europe server is less busy than Western Europe. We're more likely to find people who want to fly more seriously. Oh, you mean like if you want to see fewer, uh, if you want to see fewer pelicans, go to the West Europe server? Oh, I gotta take a screenshot of this before we're done. I forget the G-Force, uh, how do you do it? Oh, Alt F1 for a G-Force screenshot, that's right. There we go. This just looks awesome. I mean, it just looks, I don't know, it looks like something out of a trailer, you know? It's just funny looking. All right, let's. I'm gonna fly around a little bit more, just in cruise mode. Review the autopilot features, and then uh, be done for the night. All right, this thing climbs like crazy too. If you just do max throttle in hover mode. This will go up at like 10,000 feet per minute. Or it's like 11 something. Up 12,000 right now. 12,400 feet per minute. Pretty fast. Yeah, and you can, in hover mode, you can go up to, is it, it's either 24 or 28,000 feet before it'll stop you. So we're at, yeah, we're at 58 right now. Yeah, you can go up to like 28,000. All right, so I'll pull it back to the green marker and I'll just review the autopilot features again really quickly before I end the stream. So I'm gonna switch to cruise mode. So you start in hover mode, that's with this switch down. For cruise mode, move the switch up. It'll like transition into a cruise mode and start putting the thrust, like thrusting you forward. Just make sure you add enough thrust to so you're not stalling or um, and then you want to try to keep the thrust under, or your indicated airspeed under 360. Otherwise, it'll give you the overspeed warning. Pitch trim does work. So if you have pitch trim bound or on a wheel or something on a, on a honeycomb throttle quadrant, you can use that. All right, and then when you're in cruise mode, you can use autopilot. So you can just hit AP engage. 
all the ones that are lit up with text are functional. Flight level change is not functional. So now autopilot's on. And we're not in heading mode yet, so I think it's just gonna hold our pitch and our roll. It look like, looks like what it's doing. All right, so now uh, say we wanna go up to 20,000 feet. Right here on the synthetic vision, you have 2,500 right here. This is our selected altitude, just like you would in another um, autopilot, like a Garmin. The top left knob right here is for the heading selection. The bottom left is for altitude. So I can roll my mouse wheel or click and drag. So I'm gonna set that up to, let's just set it to 20. Let's set it to 20,000. All right, so 20,000 feet. And now what I can do, what it's doing, because I rolled this number past our current altitude, oops, let me pull back on our throttle. It's like kind of leveling us off, but I can just hit VS mode over here, up, VS mode up or down. In this case, it's up because I have it set to a higher altitude. So it's just automatically gonna climb for us. You don't set, uh, you don't set what the vertical speed is. You just tell it to go up an altitude or down an altitude and it'll do it for you. All right, so speaking of overspeed, we can also use auto throttle. So if we hit auto throttle here, it'll arm it. And then the auto throttle setting is right here, 350 knots, the magenta one, and then our actual one is underneath it, our indicated airspeed. If you wanna change the auto throttle knots, you just use the top right knob here. So top left is heading, bottom left is altitude, top right is the uh, our auto throttle. So if I move that up to 355, you can hear it. You can see that moving automatically to get us up to 355. So this is how we can avoid our overspeed. And then finally, the um, we have heading mode. So you can either look over at the other display to find what the heading is set to, or you can just switch to the map on this one. There's no numerical value. This is our current heading, but this little bug right here shows our set heading. So if you wanna change the heading, you just use the top left knob right here, and that moves that heading bug around the compass. So say we wanna head directly east, I'll just move it over to the east, and then I'll just hit heading mode right here on the autopilot, now it'll bank us to the right until we get to east, and it'll hold the east setting for us. So those are, uh, those are all the autopilot settings. I mean, it's enough, and if you put in uh, waypoints like we did, on the map like this, you can just manually use the heading knob. Once you have it enabled, just use the heading right here on the top left. Remember this little knob right here. Or if you have a shortcut for it on like a throttle quadrant or some sort of external autopilot peripheral you have, you can do that too. Um, just so like right now, if I use my honeycomb, um, I have the Bravo throttle quadrant. I just use the little heading selector and I can just move that dial. So you can just use that as like a, you know, poor man's navigation mode. Just do it manually through the heading. And yeah, and then this little knob right here on the top right, this is for the range of the map. And there's also this camera mode, and this the knob next to that one up here is to change the tilt of the camera. So you can like surveil the city or you know, whatever you're, whatever you're doing with this. It's also like a good way to see through, like almost like synthetic vision, but using the actual camera if you don't want to use synthetic vision. Um, and then on the radar map mode, you can play around with these buttons here to show different waypoints and terrain. I guess as a weather radar mode. And then if you turn on waypoint navigates and all this, it'll reveal different waypoints mattering your zoom level. So you can see here, turn on waypoints. We have our RNAV waypoints. Navades will give us like our VORs. Uh, what is TFC? Oh, TFC is traffic. So there's other planes around us. And then airports, of course, airports. And then terrain, I think this is a relative terrain mode. So when you get lower to the ground, you can test this really quickly, actually. Switch back into hover mode. And you watch when I switch back into hover mode, all the autopilot, uh, the whole autopilot unit turns off. Because there's no, it basically is autopilot in hover mode. Um, so now I'm just gonna cut the throttle. We're gonna go down super fast. I'll just turn on that synthetic or terrain over here on this side. Just turn all these on. 
Oh, you have to choose between terrain and weather. That makes sense. So as we get lower and lower, I think this will work like a relative terrain setting on like the NXI. So it'll show uh, yellow if you're within like a thousand feet of the terrain around you. It'll show red if you're within 500 to hitting the terrain around you. So basically, yeah, you don't want red. I think there's a green, is it like green a thousand feet, yellow 750, red 500 or below? I think that's what it is. I have to look it up. Uh, but yeah, when we're in hover mode and we're descending, we have our throttle all the way out, we're descending at 12,000 feet per minute, so we're at 10k right now. So we'll be down there in no time. But that's pretty much it for the autopilot. And then, I mean, landing is as simple as controlling your throttle. And so you get down and using the little landing gear button here, or a shortcut that you have to put the landing gear out and just slowly easing down to the ground. I'll just wait to see the relative terrain start working here. All right, we're at 5,000 feet. We're going down really fast, so I just want to start raising my throttle a little bit so we don't descend so quickly, slam into the ground. And again, if you haven't seen it right here, you have your throttle, so you can see the pink is my current setting, percentage-wise. When it's in the green area, this is kind of neutral, so we won't be climbing or descending. And then here we'll be climbing. My pelican said, nah, you can't control me. Uh, maximum performance climb is 690 oh, feet per minute. Oh, and the velocity, got it. Yeah, this thing goes up like 12,000. All right, there's the relative terrain right there. You see, it's getting red now. So there's our huge warning. Oh, okay, and it's got like a deeper red setting. So it's a little different than like the Garmin's. But yeah, you can see the like orangish color and now it's a darker red color as we get lower and lower to warn us that we're approaching the terrain. It's pretty much like, um, it's almost like a radar altimeter in a way where it shows you your altitude relative to the terrain around you. And then, yeah, when you're coming in for a landing, just put the gear down and just add throttle to make it a smooth landing and you're good. It's like the best sightseeing uh, plane in the game, I guess. Unless you want to be really slow, then you can fly the velocity or the helicopter. And then once you touch down, just pull the throttle all the way out and you're good. Wait, the helicopter caught up? <laughs> Wait, I wasn't going very fast then, was I? Wait, how did you catch up? Is that Miko? Uh, how did you even catch up? That thing goes pretty fast then. Wait, weren't we just going like 300 knots? <laughs> Ooh, all right, that was fun. All right, that was, uh, I'm gonna call the stream here. It's been three hours, so that's, seems to be, oh, you used slew mode, okay. I was like, no way. It's thought we dusted you in that thing. All right, it's been fun. And don't forget to play the Halo theme music by hitting the play button here. Thanks to you guys for teaching me all that stuff too. I didn't even know. I figured out the autopilot before I turned the stream on, but I did not, uh, I did not notice the CD player over here. And, uh, the cargo door control here. Good stuff. Alright guys, good stuff. Thanks for hanging out. I will, uh... I'll see if I keep the stream thing going at least once a week. It's a, it's a good time and I appreciate you guys hanging out for this long and yeah. And nobody in chat was salty about there being a uh, Halo spaceship in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I think we're all a little, I think we're all pretty chill here. So I appreciate that. <laughs> all right, everybody have a good night. Thanks for hanging out and I'll, uh, I'll see you guys in a video. I'll probably have a video out this week. So uh, you can keep your eye out for that. And um, yeah, looking forward to all the stuff coming out from Working Title this year. So, if you're not in their Discord either, um, it's definitely worth Googling and jump hopping in the Working Title Discord if you're all about the NXI and the CJ4 and the G3000. They do an incredible job, so they deserve all the props. All right, guys, have a good night or have a good day wherever you are. Thanks for joining. Like the little wave there. <laughs> all right, everyone. Yeah, go download the Pelican. It's free. All right, see you guys next time. Have a good night. Have a good day.